Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to the, the live stream guitar build that is normally on Mondays. But today's a Tuesday because yesterday was a bank holiday, and uh, let's just leave it at that. Uh, how are you? Did you have a good Easter? Yes, good. Uh, I too have had a fantastic weekend. Uh, it's been it's been a lot of work, but we're all good. Uh, before me, I have I have mostly completed what I said I would off the live stream, and that was I said that I would sand this base down and I would glue the neck in. And here, here before you, you see a glued in neck and a partially sanded uh, base. I, of course, left it to the last minute. There is nothing quite like stress-induced uh, endorphins, or what, what's the word? Panic, panic. There's nothing quite like panic to make you actually get on and do the job. And of course, when that happens, that is when technical difficulties will arise and destroy you. And it turns out that the power lead on my uh, admittedly old Merca sander uh, was failing and has decided to take that very minute to start blowing the fuses in the workshop, which is fun because we've got all sorts of things going on here. So uh, yeah, before last night's uh, Luthier's Question Time live stream, I was desperately trying to do this. There will be some hand sanding to recover from the lack of that moving forward, but well, we'll see. This guitar is coming together. It's a bass. Uh, on the uh, on the laptops, on the uh, on the computers, on the chat, we have the ineffable, inimitable. I've lost in words. It sounds like you're trying to button me up or something. Ineffable means all knowing. Inimitable means what is inimitable? Somebody you can't flap. I don't know. Anyway, Talitha is on the on the keys, on the keyboard, uh, dealing with the chat, putting people in timeouts. Terry, love, I see you. Uh, uh, we love Terry, and uh, and all of that. So there we go. How are you, Talitha? I'm okay. We got some people saying there's buzzing on the audio. Oh, for crying out loud! So. Uh, I don't know. This is a brand new microphone inside this uh, uh, lapel mic, and it should be absolutely fine. Move it away from my bed. I'm not allowed a great big bushy beard. I just am not, because it messes with the microphones too much. And that also might rub up against your hoodie. Really okay, well, we can get rid of the hoodie at the moment. So uh, all, of the, uh, all of the power cuts yesterday messed up with the, uh, uh, the heater, so there's no, there has been no heat in this uh, building over the past 12 hours or so. It's a little bit chilly in here, but uh, we're fine. There we go. Uh, anyway, how many people do we currently have watching? Because it is a Tuesday and it's a bit weird. 137. Well, there we go. There's, there, there are some people, so that's all good. We've got a new member in Peter Crossley, who joined Peter. all that jazz. Welcome to the membership. I've been steadily watching the membership decline on the main channel and, and rise on extras because this is where it actually pays to be a member, to be honest. So, uh, yes, that's, uh, uh, I, I really do appreciate your support. Okay. And our first super chat from Terry. Terry! Uh, who says, so will you be using last night's nasty red wine to stain the base? <laughs> Terry, you are so, so in my head. It's like brothers from another mother or something, something equally cheesy. Uh, I had the, uh, uh, the half glass of really, it was really, really not nice wine. Um, uh, and I stood here after the stream and I'm looking at it and the base was in the corner there and I'm going, not this time, but I seriously considered it like, that's very cool. That's very cool. <sighs> so if you put Terry in time out, if your brother's from another mother and on the same wavelength, are you technically putting yourself in time out? Do you know what? I think a bit of a holiday is probably not a bad idea at this stage. Uh, it's not going to happen. The next, the next three weeks are absolutely batshit insane. I've got... Uh, so this weekend is fairly good. Uh, 
the following weekend is Makers Central, which is going to be massive and very, 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 very busy. And the weekend after that, I've got the Birmingham Guitar Show and, and then maybe I'll be allowed to rest a little bit. We shall see. You rest? Ha, yeah, I understand. So there we go. The neck is glued in. I, uh, my Merca obviously stopped working. I had managed to get most of it down to, oh, there we go. I was expecting a, a puddle of glue cut to come through some of these, but uh, nothing actually has. That's, uh, that's all good. Uh, so yeah, the base is, oh, <laughs> I'm moving my studio to the other, to the extension soon, just for the head height as much as anything else. Here we are, we're good. It's sanded down to 240 roughly with a machine. I need to go over the whole thing by hand. So the first portion of this is gonna be a lot of talking and chatting while I do that. But uh, in reality, uh, once you get to the finer stages of sanding an instrument, the it, it's not particularly time consuming or too hard of a job. It's when you've got rough stuff that you need to get rid of in the coarser grades. Um, and that's where a, a, a palm sander, etc., is ideal. Uh, now, the other thing that I learned was that uh, it's very good with some tools that are mission critical. Uh, for example, a sander, a router, uh, a hand drill, etc. It really is important to have a backup just in case something goes wrong. And it doesn't have to be an amazing backup. I ended up using yesterday, uh, here we go, uh, the since discontinued, I think, square pad sander. I think it's been discontinued. Somebody, I've been saying that now. I might be wrong. Uh, budget sander from Triton, but it saved my bacon yesterday. Really did. Vincent cool. van der Vaart says, with a good tool like a Merca, you should be able to put a new cord on it. Oh yes, no, absolutely. Um, so here's the, here's the issue. Of course it is a... Uh, proprietary connection, but basically I think, I suspect the issue is the fact that this is really old and very well used and that's, that has broken a long time ago now. And I think in there there's a short, so I could probably cut that open and uh, rewire it, but uh, I'm just gonna get uh, a replacement and hope that that's the issue. Um, the uh, Merca is an incredible tool and it should be absolutely fine. Uh, now one of the issues I've got here is, as you can see, I've, I've got a nice hard line in some places and it's very soft line in others due to how the, uh, the sander was working. So I need to either round everything over or try and recreate my hard line by hand. Well, we'll see. Uh, I've completely forgotten. We need to have the sort of normal, normal announcement sort of thing. This is a live stream build. This is me talking to you, building a, a bass guitar in this in this particular case. Uh, if you, the chat starts to get fairly rapid. Uh, the more people wake up. Uh, throughout the day. If you absolutely desperately want to A, support us and the channel and uh, B, guarantee that I'm going to see what you say, then a super chat is the way forward. Uh, we have Talitha here and various other moderators uh, also helping. So if there's other issues, talk to them and uh, we'll go from there. And during the live stream yesterday, somebody spammed some, uh, some, some naughty links and uh, I noticed it, I just happened to be looking at the chat and it, it came in and within five seconds, uh, I think it was Paul Cook had automatic, had immediately just got rid of it. Just like boop, boop, boop. Really, really cool. So 
So I cleaned up a lot of the a lot of the glue squeeze out yesterday as we were going. That worked quite nicely. How's the audio? Is there a sort of a hissing sound now? Lisa Hartsburg is saying it sounds like the mic needs to switch channels. It's a frequency interference. It's a frequency interference. Oh my gosh. I hate these things. Okay, Mark is saying lots of radio frequency noise as well. Uh, okay. Speaking of Mark, that's Mark Jennings, right? That is Mark Jennings, yes. Yeah, his comment earlier says, I'm off work to celebrate my birthday week. I was going to make some sawdust, but you're streaming, bugger. No, go make some sawdust. Just have me in the background in, a, in an ear. I mean, this is until... Well, the main point of that comment was, happy birthday, Mark. I've already said happy birthday to Mark. I haven't. Happy birthday, Mark. There's no need to say happy birthday to Mark in such an aggressive tone of voice, Talitha. Sheesh. Um, okay. This Testing. Was... Hold on. Do you know what? I'm, I'm just, I really need to spend a lot of money on a really, really expensive microphone setup and I really don't want to. I really, 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 really don't want to. Okay. How does this sound now? Obviously quieter. I, I do think that Hopefully this has fixed that issue. But uh, there shouldn't have been a radio frequency noise. Well, I don't know. Let me know. Talitha, could you please uh, keep on top of that and uh, let me know as soon as you uh, know a difference. Because I, I really don't want audio to be bad. Okay. I think I'm going to, I'm going to make this into a gentle, a gentle round over, get rid of the hard line, it is easier and, uh, and also more comfortable, which is a good thing. And I'm sanding with the grain and it should be fairly, fairly rapid. Whoops, and if I do that. How's the audio, Talitha? sounds better. Okay, fantastic. Uh, how are you doing, Tutem Carman? Sawdust in the sockets, lol. Sawdust in what? The sockets. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of sawdust in my life. There's a user called Sawdust Passion, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I honestly don't understand how I can remember uh, people's na those weird. Well, that's no, probably because they are weird names. It's not Tim uh, or or whatever. It's Sawdust Passion. It's like yeah, Luther for bills, etc. Uh, I remember these names. Uh, so and so. I've lived next door to people for, there was a, a particular guy, I lived next door to him for seven years. And it was only by the seventh year that I actually properly learned his name. And the other guy on the other side, I still don't know it. And I talk to him on a semi-regular basis, I am that bad. So, yeah. Super chats. Yes, at this point, this is going to be boring for 10 minutes or so. Talitha, it's entirely up to you to keep this thing interesting and running and cool. I'm going out for coffee. You don't drink coffee. I know. It's like me saying, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I've got to go and wash my hair. 
I am going to use that excuse one day. Sorry, I, I can't see you Friday night. I'm washing my hair. Uh, Disky Disky sent a super chat of $2, but no message. I'll keep an eye out for... Sometimes they yeah, sometimes the messages don't actually come through uh, yes. or you click enter by mistake. Um, we'll yeah. uh, the big unit. The big unit. No lectures today. I got a ship notification on my Crimson Kit Thursday. I'm so excited to start GGBO and no lecture today, so I get to hang out with you guys all day. Excellent. Well, most of us are cool. Most of us are cool. Uh, I I sometimes question myself, but you know, you guys make me better. You also rubbed dust on your face already. Other side. <laughs> Other side. I basically over the last two or three weeks, I've taken each one of my individual children out, uh, essentially clothes shopping or, or whatever just at a date, just with dad, sort of uh, kid date thing, whatever. And uh, yesterday was the youngest, and there was this one lady who absolutely sour-faced not... That's what I was for. She was not having it. And it took about two minutes with Byron to get this woman giggling like a teenager. It was... It, he had stuff on his face, and, and, and I essentially licked the tissue and cleaned the head chocolate, chocolate milkshake. He's like, don't lick my face. I'm, I'm licking your face. This is at the till while I'm trying to pay for his freaking shorts or whatever I bought him. And, uh, and he's like, Daddy, I'm going to lick your face. I'm going to lick your beard. I'm like, no, don't lick my face. And, and the, in the end, the woman was smiling. But it was hard. It was, she was a really, really difficult audience, I tell you. That might have been an awkward, I hope these people will leave really soon smile. <laughs> no, she actually laughed. <laughs> anyway. Steam TV has a super chat and a question. Okay. If building a similar shape, could you carve the back of the upper horn smooth down the neck? Or would this be unstable? Thanks, enjoying the bass. Uh, yes, that can be, this area here can be made smoother, but already we've removed a lot of material. So in reality, there's almost no reason to. Um, that being said, I am going to do, I'm going to tidy that up in a second. So yeah, we'll get there. And thank you for your super chat, I do appreciate it. Beth McKellar says, stop making me laugh. I'm drinking coffee and I was choking. Sorry, Beth, please forgive me. Uh, Beth, it was you guys that had the six cats, yes? Uh, last night has sort of melded into, uh, into one already. But uh, yeah, the one comment, I'm pretty sure it was uh, you guys who have uh, a multitudinous cattage. Multitudinous cattage going on. My gosh. Uh, Steve Chapman Terry. Um, ben, do you remember your own name when you wake up? I have a name tag at the foot of my bed to remind me. <laughs> I Do you know when as a couple you you discuss children's names for I don't know nine months or so? <laughs> when when Jasmine was born <laughs> Tanya's one of Tanya's friends came in who who had recently had a baby. And she asked me, because Tanya was obviously out of it, what Jasmine's name was. And I immediately said, Isabel, because that was that woman's daughter's name. And she was like, oh, I'm like, no, we decided to call her Jasmine months ago. That's how bad I am, literally. Isabel's <clears throat> a Anyway, 
it's the only issue I've got with talking while doing the sanding is that I keep on forgetting which bits I've done and which I haven't. Which, uh, we'll get there. So you have to keep the questions while you finish. No, 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 keep the questions coming because it uh, keeps it less boring. Uh, Rocket Punk Art has hey, a question ma? about staining. Hi. I don't have enough 320 grit sandpaper at home. Would sanding with 400 on some stunning stains work or is that already too fine a grit? Uh, I generally actually don't often go much more than 240 really. 320 is, um, I'm tripping over the clamps everywhere. 320 is fine. If you've got even a single piece of 320, you should be able to do an entire guitar with it. That being said, um, are you talking about, could you repeat the question just in case? I think I've missed something. I don't have enough 320 grit sandpaper at home. Would sanding with 400 on some stunning stains work or is that already ah. too fine? Okay, that's it. So, um, no, that would be absolutely fine. Basically, uh, in my head, I thought we were talking about uh, preparing for stain, not dialing back the stain so that you can add a second coat. Uh, yes, 400 will be fine. It might, depending on how recently you've applied the stain, it might um, peel up a little bit. You might end up with blocks, chunks of stain on the sandpaper because it is finer. But uh, as long as you're aware of that, you should be fine. Super chat from Sweet Tea to say sorry hey, I'm late, peace and love. What, what mate? Sorry? What? Sorry I'm late. Sorry you're late? I thought you said sorry mate. I was like, that's not the sort of thing that Sweet Tea says. That's a very British uh, comment. Uh, uh, how's it going Sweet Tea? You are not missing anything yet. It's the boring bit. I didn't manage to... Yeah. I did not manage to sand properly yesterday. Okay, so that's 240, that's 240. On this end, I need to actually go back to 180. Uh, Paul Needs and Beth McKellar say, yep, us with the six cats and a mad labradoodle. Oh, that's even better. Uh, yeah. So the trick here is that I'm paying attention to, uh, I've got some coarser sand, sanding marks here that I just need to get rid of. So here we are. Um, so Mad Lab Labradoodle, six cats. Sounds like a pretty awesome place to be honest. And a tequila habit. Do you know what's not, I'm actually starting to get to know you people. Whereas beforehand, for the longest time, pre live streams, it was, I might semi get to know the odd person through one or two random comments in a video. But, but here it, it, it really actually is, I feel like I'm making friends with you, which is, uh, which is nice. Thank you for joining. So the headstock is currently rested on my foot. Chat guide, Lisa. Yeah, sorry, I'm reading. Reich Angusbach says, "Are we going to see the chickens again anytime soon?" 
I'm afraid not. Um, I'm afraid Spaghetti Noodle Doodle Doo got got by a fox uh, that during that same week managed to oh, that's sharp. Uh, managed to uh, de chicken both of my neighbours as well. Uh, basically, in, in the course of a week, about a dozen chickens got uh, uh, they ascended to the next plane. Uh, so we managed, we found a new home for for Caramel, and she's very, very happy uh, in a uh, in a big flock with a lot of other chickens. Apparently, they get fed sausage roll every morning. Uh, Liz, who we home to Caramel, has a neighbour who buys like Greg's sausage roll, breaks them up to little pieces, and throws them over the fence to the chickens when he walks past. I mean, honestly, the, I, I, I get it. You feel like you are a god. And, you know, in the mornings, every morning you're worshipped by these 30-odd hens. It's just like, yeah, I, I, I understand. <laughs> okay. Uh, sweet tea, super chat. Uh, because you thought I said mate, and you said that was very British. He says not British, but I do deserve tea time. <laughs> Very good point. And a super chat from the big unit. Hey. Uh, ben, if I stay at a hotel in Dorchester, mm -hmm. what's the best way to get out to Crimson every day? Do you have Uber in the UK? Yeah, <laughs> we do have Uber. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. So there are there are taxis, and sometimes. Uh, other students or people are driving that way anyway. Uh, I would suggest that you get in touch with Julie via Crimson Headquarters. So Ricky will put you in touch with her. And if she she is that the lady that uh, helps students find accommodation with us and also arrange transport when needed. Exactly. So yeah, she will. For example, if if you don't mind sharing or if you're interested in sharing, um, she would try and put you in a place where there's an English student who's got a car, for example. And she, it's part of the service and, uh, you know, her fee is minimal um, in reality. Sorry, the, uh, the sides of this were not quite good enough. Uh, but I think, I'm, I think I've broken the back of this one. Uh, so yes, uh, there are taxis. There are definitely taxis. There are there are ways, and it's something that we deal with on a weekly basis. So uh, yeah, we should be able to help. Madam Coyote's workshop super chat. Hey hey. Will you be doing a shop tour when your it says no shop, but I think she makes workshop uh, is finished. I'd love to see what you've been working on. Yes, um, yes, emphatically, uh, there's going to be a new sh a shop tour of this workshop. In fact, there's going to be a a video of the whole thing coming together, apart from this weekend of painting and pain. Uh, I didn't film that, um, <clears throat> and there will also be a tour of the new place and a workshop build of headquarters where there's been a lot happening as well so yeah Graham B says what a great community this is glad to be a small part of it yeah, I couldn't agree more I couldn't agree more I always knew it was cool and the people were, were genuinely awesome um, but the live streams have brought it to to light. It is so fun talking to you guys and getting to know you, and uh, yeah, it's it's incredible. I I feel very 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 lucky. Super chat from Godie the roadie. Godie. Did you see my Instagram post? I tagged you in. Very bad at checking his Instagram. I, uh, very bad doesn't come close. <clears throat> Terrible might be uh, even better. 
uh, was it talking to that guitar shop? I saw that you spoke to the guy at the uh, local Yeovil guitar shop. Um, something along those lines. If it was more recent than that, then I don't think so. Um, I, I very rarely spend much time on Instagram, which is a problem, I probably should. Um, I have a question okay. from Hugh McKay. Hey, him. How do you prevent distortion of ribs when clamping and gluing on curving? Uh, the, the curving needs to be either bent to match with, basically you can't build tension in, the rib needs to be nice and solid. Um, if the rib is in the mould, uh, that's also uh, very important. So basically you've got the guitar ribs, they're in a mould being held nice and solid, and then the curfing, even if it's pre-curfed, Sometimes it's a good idea to wet it and then steam bend it so it matches perfectly. Uh, or even cut more curving in the particular curves uh, so that you're not building in tension. But uh, you're already halfway there just knowing that it is an issue to watch out for. Yeah, okay. So I've got some uneven... I've got some unevenness here. And I'm going to go back with a half round file and I'm going to use this, the paper on the file to even that out. So that bevel was actually done with the murker, I think, and it wasn't particularly smooth. I should have started with the rasp, to be honest. Sorry, uh, Johan van Luki, uh, John, who came and helped us the weekend of the workshop renovation. Yeah. Uh, just in the comments. Um, he says, I'm likely to be all over the time lapse of the workshop coming together and Felipe was freaking everywhere with the camera. Lol. <laughs> and having a drone fly around you as you work was an experience. Yeah, that was that was a bit uh, that was something else for sure. No, I'm looking forward to that video. Uh, we don't actually have huge amounts more to do. It's mainly building <sighs> tool racks and finishing the finishing the studio really. But uh, yeah. Super chat from Jules. Jules. Just to say hey, bun. Hi, hi. Us. Look. Devil's horns. I am so sorry I'm making you watch me do sanding. I had promised to not do this. I had absolutely promised to not do this. I thought the rule was you were no longer allowed to make promises. <sighs> Under promise, over deliver. Anyway, the plan was that I wouldn't be sanding on the live stream. And that's all well and good. My thought was, huh, the live stream starts at 11. No worries. That's a good like half an hour after I wake up to <laughs> a couple of hours worth of work to do pre the live stream. And uh, yesterday Tonya's like, we're all going to the dentist, 10 past nine tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so anyway, this is what it is. We're nearly there. The, the top is, uh, is coming together. I'm pretty happy with the uh, with the curves or, uh, or lack thereof actually. It's fairly gentle and uh, 
and it's good. Use your hand a lot. Uh, your eyes don't necessarily see what's going on, but your hand will tell you when something's not working. The big unit says, Ben, I think you're the only one opposed to sanding on the live stream. We don't mind at all. <sighs> I think that this chicka 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 noise would drive me insane. Well, no, that's the thing. When I'm creating it, it's fine. But actually trying to follow a discussion while somebody else is doing it? Mm -mm. No. I had to put music on the other day because the neighbour was... Um, uh, I think he was mixing cement or something. And uh, just, the, just the noise of that cement thing driving me balmy. So, yeah. Terry Love says ASMR, Isram said ASMR sanding. Graham B said sanding is just another way of saying meditation. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, oh, for fuck. Sorry. Sorry, I've got a... Uh, uh, Let's get personal, shall we? I basically in the last year have found out that I have ADHD. It's 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 now essentially confirmed, and it's not. I always thought that ADHD was a very very specific set of, of things, which aren't necessarily me. There's a lot more that goes into it. And one of the things that does, that is a part of it, is you, you end up with obsessions. And my obsession over the last three or four years has become watches. watches. And a part of it is the, um, the adrenaline rush or the dopamine rush when you get a, a new watch and or this is how shopaholics are born and all that jazz. And um, knowing that it's, knowing the physicality behind this obsession and many other things and, and ways I react and, and am in my life has allowed me to reassess everything. And uh, honestly, one of the most important things that I can teach you is nothing to do with guitar building. It is, do not be afraid to reassess and think and consider and learn who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. I am a completely different person to the person I was even a year ago. Um, part of that is I've realized that, first of all, the whole Rolex nonsense is utter. <clears throat> I don't like the way... There's no inlay on this headstock. <gasps> you forgot. No, we just never got to it. Uh, <laughs> dog stealing Tupperware. <laughs> it's Should fine. I go and retrieve it? No, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> Pippin, Pippin just stuck his head in the door. He's like... Ooh. There was water or something in it. Um, it's just water, it's fine. <sighs> so anyway, uh, the, the whole luxury watch thing. I was very lucky that uh, I got uh, offered at retail price these watches that immediately when you walk out of the, the shop, they generally double in value or more. So as an investment, which is how I sold it to Mrs. Bunn, uh, it was great. But the, the, uh, 
the culture, the the whole feeling, it's actually started making me feel a bit dirty and, and shitty. And uh, as a result of that, I've started divesting myself of, of some of my watches. And in fact, I'm I'm basically going to be getting rid of a lot of them. Uh, okay, now the issue is the company that's that I decided to go with. <laughs> It's giving me a major runaround, all sorts of chaos. And uh, that email that I just reacted to was uh, yet another. They've actually sold this watch and they're still giving me trouble. Um, it's... So they sold it for you? Yeah, you send it on consignment, then they sell it. And then you get, you know... And uh, we're now, yeah, six months later and they've sold one of the six that I sent. Uh, because I, I really am, um, I would much rather take that money out and uh, and put it into crimson or, or, or you know, into things that are actually worth doing rather than just make myself feel better by, you know, having nice things. <sighs> okay, uh, let us have a bit of a digression. I'm going to digress from the digression. How's that? Okay, so here... I think you'll be able to see. I can see a shake in the in the sapili here, and uh, you can just see that it's not particular. Well, it doesn't go all the way through. I can't see it on the end of the headstock, which is why we missed it. Definitely doesn't go through. Look at that! Isn't that look cool? Uh, so I need to fill that. I need to fill that with dust and glue. So, uh, so yeah. The easiest way to make the dust is to just sand the back of the headstock. So I know we haven't done much sanding yet today, but just more sanding. Let's do some sanding. <laughs> While you're doing that, okay. Spike the spike the frugal spikes frugal fixer shop. I'm not surprised you're confused, he changes the name yeah. semi-regularly. This is also a terribly small laptop thing. Yes, uh, terrible. He says, talk yesterday was about having pets or a zoo. I guess zoo here. Five dogs, four cats, two lizards and 14 chickens. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, now I'm going to use some soup, some thin uh, CA glue. There it is. And uh, and that's going to go in quite deep. And it's going to go past the, the dust that I've just created. Now I'm going to be able to sand through the staining on the outside. I'm not worried about that. Uh, also, I am going to be finishing this with uh, guitar finishing oil, uh, maybe even a coat of shellac to start with. Now, before I let that cure, and go in and And this is driving, it's wasting my sandpaper, but it's driving dust into, into the fine, thin super glue. And should be good. Onto some medium. Underneath, <clears throat> and I've got a load of dust here. Okay. 
and that actually acts as the accelerator as well. Now we all do this with our fingers. In reality, what we should do is the other masking tape trick. It's the other masking tape and super glue trick. And we're good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So essentially, I'm I'm reassessing my entire life. I'm reassessing uh, my collections and my addictions and my hobbies and my interests. And uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting. On that note, to me. <laughs> Maybe not to you. On that note, super chat from Terry Love. Terry. He says, I must have ADHD. My past obsessions are cameras, computers, watches, electronic gadgets that I don't really need, ebook, readers, etc. It's, yeah, well, I'm, I'm using it as an excuse. I think, I think there are people who are collectors. There are people who have a wide range of interests and uh, keep it up. It's really, but yeah, chances are, it depends on how, I absolutely, with the watches, and I'm sure you agree, you, I felt that I needed to, <clears throat> I felt that I needed to obsess about something that wasn't guitars. And I do think that that's actually really rather important. Uh, if you're obsessing about one thing all the time and it's everything that you do, including your job, then, uh, it does tend to get stale, I think. There we go. So that crack, you can see that it's there because I used dust and super glue rather than dust and white glue, which would have made the color match more cl uh, clearly. But it's not if you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't know that that's a crack and not just grain in the wood. There was absolutely no reason to do that. Super chat from the big unit. I have ADHD too. I've known for years as I was diagnosed as a kid. Okay. My obsession is I own 35 guitars now, 35 guitars, and now I'm collecting guitar building tools. <clears throat> for a split second, I thought you were going to say, I am now collecting guitar builders and I was going to get worried. <laughs> don't worry, you're top of the list. Actually, I suppose I, I actually do collect guitar builders, don't I? Um, Terry Love's responded to the big unit saying that qualifies as amateur status. Oof. Fight, fight, fight. Um, yeah, but isn't it interesting? So with that knowledge, with that, I, I, I did get myself a new watch uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, uh, it's the Seamaster Black Black. This is the most me, me watch absolutely imaginable. <clears throat> I got it on 0% uh, finance uh, for five years, so I'm paying nothing, essentially. Um, and uh, and the, it's literally everything about this watch is black. It's the whole, every single little bit of it that's visible is black with various different degrees of, of shading and all that. And it's an incredibly cool look. And it's a watch that is very importantly available that anybody can go and buy. And uh, I would rather wear something like that every single day, and uh, you will be seeing it a lot, than something like 
I've got currently got the Rolex GMT Master 2 that nobody can get. And I've started to feel like a bit of a, a show off or a bit of a, you know, bit of an arsehole for wearing something like that that also doesn't necessarily say anything about me except for the fact that I, you know, had some money and managed to get one. I'm more worried that people think that I've gone and paid uh, grey market prices, which is uh, insane. I would never pay that much for a watch. Anyway, um, sorry, what I was trying to say was knowing, knowing why I am this and you have the same thing, do you find that that then changes the way you act? Because you don't necessarily need uh, the medication in order to do that. The, just the knowledge, I mean, you could choose to discount it, but just the knowledge that that's how your, your body works, your mind works, um, you're not creating dopamine, etc., etc., etc. Just that knowledge has helped change the way I am to a certain extent. Okay, so we're going to have to do an inlay of some sort in the headstock. Or are we? I don't know. Um, let us talk about that. First super chat from Terry Love. Terry, I want to know how many guitars... Um, who said who was an amateur? I've lost it. I was talking, I was thinking about watches. Terry Love said the big unit was an amateur. Okay, there we go. 35 guitars. Yeah, so Terry, how many guitars do you have, sir? <laughs> anyway, Terry's <coughs> super chat. I think I got you both beat, but none, not that many personal ones. Yeah, that doesn't count. Oh. The, the wall at Crimson doesn't count. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are personal ones. Mm. But anyway. So he says, black on black, can you read the time on that watch? The shop was probably relieved that someone bought it. No, uh, it, yes, you can. It's incredibly legible. You'll see it in the videos. It's, um, it's a black ceramic case with a sapphire crystal, which also means that it's essentially going to look like new pretty much forever because the ceramic is so hard it doesn't scratch. Um, and uh, it's got a ceramic dial with, uh, with black indices and black things and black loom even. Google the photos, it's incredibly cool. And, uh, but you've got different shades of black and different textures in there. So and it's shiny, black and shiny black. polished, uh, matte, laser ablated. It is, in, I actually should be wearing it now just to show you. I wasn't going to talk about it, but here we are. Best laid plans and I, I yeah, always mess them up. I don't know what I'm thinking about. I don't know what I'm thinking. You distracted me. So sorry. So uh, Kevin Harvey says, I collect wood planes. <laughs> me too. I have over a hundred. Me too. It's a, I, I, mm. it's a problem, isn't it? It's a, it's a huge problem. Um, I, in one of these sorts of things, thought it would be funny to count how many planes I had and this was back when I was at uh, Crimson headquarters and uh, I thought maybe 30 or 40 and I stopped counting at about 85 or so it was just it's it's a problem um, but but again that's somewhat of an investment isn't it okay Cody the ready says he has 30 guitars That doesn't surprise me. Um, I have a question from... Where is it? Rocket Punk Art. Okay. It says, quick question for my father-son build with my dad. Yes. I kind of want to make some Shusugi ban. Yeah, burn it. Do you Bad think out. burning and sanding the body before doing the neck pocket would work? Uh, yes, but there's no need to. That's a th uh, 
So it depends on how you're going to hold your templates to the uh, to the body. Uh, now doing it with masking tape and superglue would absolutely not work. You can make a template that uh, holds into screw holes or bridge holes or whatever, but it's not absolutely. It's just not necessary. This is the thing. The uh, the burning goes up to the neck pocket and, and it's it's fine. Okay, so the question is I don't know I don't know what I want to do. So we've got the crimson logo. And crimson is something that I'm actually getting rid of. That's actually quite cool, isn't it? Damn it. I wasn't actually thinking about... While one is distracted, cool things might happen. Okay, I'm not going to do an inlay. I'm not going to do an inlay. There's absolutely no need to. But I am going to use a V gouge and carve something into this headstock. So I'm going to sand that mess off. Question about how many guitars Terry Love has? None. <laughs> he says I have zero music ability. And you yet you called him an amateur. My gosh. <laughs> Tanitha, could you please pass me that uh, tripod that's in the ceiling? Uh, thank you very much. I don't like this tripod, but it is better. This is currently not doing its. Do I? I can't, I can't, I can't. Ah! Look at that, watch me getting distracted, hey? Fix a problem and it becomes a problem. There we go. Let's get this done. Gary Thornhill says, do the crimson logo, the last crimson base. Um, the problem is, I don't want to. <laughs> Um, you do get final veto. It's it's not about that. It's just I'm not sure. I'm I'm not actually sure what I even want to do. Um, so that sort of is a thing. The crimson. I'm just looking for a, just looking for a template, see if I've got one. Here we go. Paul Mead says, Terry, so you're just here to aggravate Ben. Love it. Um, Not aggravate, entertain. No, I love Terry. Stimulate. Yeah. That sounds weird. It's Letha. Uh, no, you're right. Dopamine rush. Keep me, uh, keep me going. And <laughs> Terry's responded to say, yep, it's my new hobby. Ah, it's your new obsession. <laughs> okay. So there's that. That works quite nicely, actually. And then... Cool. The biggest issue I've currently got is my bench isn't big enough to do base builds. It, yeah. All you have to do is 
take the vice out to its longest. Yeah, I'm, 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 and lay something over it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super chat question about oil. Yes. Burn it. Huh. Stephen Rigg. Stephen. I've just finished my guitar. Cool. With your high build oil. Very cool. But yeah. it doesn't seem to be hard. More like rubber after two days. Does it just need more time? No, you need to uh, read the instructions. Um, you are not supposed to... I need to sort out my ruler storage. You are not supposed to leave the finish sitting on the top of the instrument. Uh, you need to put the oil on, and then after 10, maybe 12 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that, depending on where you are and how warm it is, the oil starts to go off and become rubbery. And you can feel that starting to, uh, as you run your finger through it, you'll feel it starting to grab your, your finger. At that point, you remove all of the excess oil take it back with a strong bit of tissue to something that feels almost touch dry. You let that cure for a day or two. I mean, six hours is actually fine for the most part, depending on if, if it's warm enough. And then you go on with your next build, uh, next uh, coat of finish. Um, this is not a lacquer. It, that is not how it works. Now with what you've got, I would say uh, flood, uh, pour some oil on the top of the instrument use a 1200 or 1500 grit wet and dry paper on a sanding block and rub back. That will semi melt what's on there currently and then you'll be able to rub the excess off. Uh, if you've got stain underneath, then that could be a problem. Uh, in which case, don't use the wet and dry paper, just put on more oil and rub the excess off. You wanna get a perfect flat finish that's, yeah. That's, that's how the oils work. And this is the same with teak oil and true oil and, no, not true oil, which isn't actually an oil. <sighs> yeah, it's one of those things. Okay, I need a V-gouge. I need to clamp this guitar down, so... I think Terry Love and uh, Mark Jennings are going to gang up on you in the comments. Why are Terry Love and Mark Jennings going to gang up on me in the comments? I don't like people ganging up on me. Well, Terry Love says annoying you is his new hobby. Mm -hmm. Mark Jennings responded with fun, isn't it? Yeah. And the little purple devil emoji. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mark. <laughs> uh, super chat from Jules. Jules. Uh, yesterday after the live stream, I found the piercing saw and ordered it straight away. Cool. And a one and a half inch chisel. Thanks, Bun, for the shop. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for the support. Uh, okay, I'm clamping this down. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're go there's obviously the vintage tool shop, but there's also we're adding more and more tools to the game uh, that are more traditional. Birds or cats, I'm not sure. This camera is annoying me. This whole setup is uh, problematic. So you still haven't brought the other tripod back from Crimson? No. That's not working. Sorry people, this is... This is a problem, but I should, just by moving that, be able to fix it. And then this goes here. That goes there. And my camera's actually pointing where I'm, ha ha. Okay, cool, cool in the game.
It's a van of art says, this chat is awesome. Great people having fun with me. Yeah. Grr. Uh, that's a macaroni gouge. Uh, small V gouge. Actually, it might be over here. Come to think of it. And Mark Jennings says, Aha. naughty me. Oops. <laughs> All right, so here you go. I'm using a little V-gouge here. Very, very useful and cool tool. Interesting questions from Anthony Cunliffe. All right. Could you use a tattoo gun to add yes. a design to a guitar, or would you just damage the gun and the guitar? Uh, no, I've seen people do it. It works. Cool. And another question from him was, what's, your, what's the best happy accident you've had on a guitar build? Uh, child and oh, I was going to say long term project number three. Um, it wasn't really an accident, it was more a should we? Yes, on so, a guitar build. On a guitar build, uh, honestly, that's up to you guys. Um, Debated in the comments, I, I honestly don't know. There's so many different things that that do happen and and a lot of the discussion a lot of the things that that happen during the guitar builds are there you know i was not planning on doing this card this morning it wasn't wasn't even on the cards but uh, yeah the thought occurred to me and next thing I know, after swearing blind I wasn't going to do the Crimson logo, I'm doing the Crimson logo because it's a cool logo. Uh, so Matt Toman says that he thought he was the pebble in your shoe, but he loves you anyway. Huh. And Terry responded, Matt Toman, I'm the brick in his shoe. <laughs> As long as nobody drops me in a lake, I'm all right. <laughs> uh, some super chats. Okay. Uh, Steen TV. Hi. Could you Hi add, again. Could you add glow in the dark dust to the logo to match the freight lines? And when will the raffle for this space start? I could, but I'm not going to. Um, I want to get I want to get it under finish now, really, and uh, I've never actually done a logo. L yeah, the whole thing in three D like this. I, I've, I've carved bits and pieces in the back, but not the actual whole logo. And I want to see what that looks like. Uh, I have said that I'm going to raffle this base off, haven't I? You can't renege. But you could fix it in post, can't you? Can you just go and... <laughs> yeah, but 340 people are listening to this conversation. Uh, the brick in my shoe. <laughs> no, don't blame Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, when am I going to meet you in person? That'll be fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, this... <sighs> I kind of want to keep this, but no, I, the, the, this base will be raffled off at... Talitha, when are we planning on uh, this series becoming something that's going live on the, on the channel? Um, I'm not in the editing mentality, I'm in the live stream mentality. So ask me tomorrow. Okay, essentially this is something that uh, we need to talk about uh, when the videos start going live on the main channel we will have an idea what we're trying to do is actually be grown up about this i know and we want to have all the footage know roughly how many videos it's going to be and we'll be able to say okay it's going to be six videos over a three-week period and during that three-week period the, the base will be raffled off and a and week after that, we'll deliver the base. Yeah, we'll want the final day of the raffle to end with the final video. Well, not really. We want the final video to have 
uh, a week so that everybody's got time to see it. Okay. But uh, yeah, there's a. It does need to coincide. Yeah, everything's got to be coordinated and planned out. So we will keep you posted. Sweet Tea Guitar says, off to work, have a wonderful day, peace and love. Sweet Tea, what do you do? If, if I'm allowed to ask, I'm very interested. And if he's still in the chat. If he's still in the chat, I'm very interested to see what to know. <laughs> Fukumi says, so this is how you get around it. No edited version means no raffle. Ha <laughs> Naughty. Yeah. I'm so tempted to keep it. It's, it, it really is cool. Um, I I could always build another. Actually, so here's Talitha. Could you pass me that box there? This one. Yeah. Um, I went to my first car boot sale. I was surprised I didn't see you there yesterday, actually, Talitha. Oh, mum decided we weren't going. Well, mum sucks. Plus, you're usually there first thing in the morning. No, not this time. I was late, which sucks because uh, I saw some tool dealers who. Uh, um, were laughing at me because I was late and they got all the good stuff. <laughs> Literally. Okay, but I found this box and uh, and it's a super cool box. Is this a digression? This is a digression on a digression with a digression oh, side. Enough. Okay, so, so yes, I found this box, which is beautiful. I'm sure you'll agree. And uh, it's a it's a shotgun box uh, or a gun gun box uh, with a key and some beautiful fittings and all that. Uh, now this is an ebony uh, gun cleaner, which is. I mean, to be honest, this. <laughs> This is worth what I paid for the entire ensemble, to be honest. So this might end up for sale at the tool shop, but I might end up keeping it, to be honest. It's, it's just gorgeous. Um, but what I'm saying is, does this not look like a guitar ship living? I'm seriously thinking about taking out these, these bits, or maybe even working around it, building a travel guitar that lives inside this case, designed for this case, and designed for me to keep and love and hold for the rest of my life. And uh, that would then mean that I would be able to raffle off the handle build. If I'm planning on keeping this one, Isn't that cool? Tiny. Tiny, tiny. Wouldn't it be amazing? So anyway, there we go. Um, so while I'm tempted, while I'm tempted to keep the base, and I'm not going to because I'm not an arsehole, I am now also tempted to just raffle off the hand tool build that I was not going to raffle off and immediately build myself a, an even smaller little I don't don't even talk to me to leave she's counting how many videos I've got going on a lot a hell of a lot mm -hmm. okay uh, comments are coming thick and fast so don't you call our commenters thick no Garth Rider Creation says, Hey Bun, hey, hey. getting ready to start my first ever build for GGBO. Congratulations. But I don't play. Doesn't matter. Will it be an issue for my final video that I won't be able to play the damn thing? So I responded in the chat and said, it shouldn't be an issue, just get a friend to play in the video. And he said, I don't have friends. sweet of you to assume I have friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, it, honestly, it's not an issue. Not an issue at all. As long as you include really nice photographs or... Um, like Ben does b-roll of a finished guitar to just show off what you've done then that's fine the thing is pointed out I I point out my flaws uh, on a regular basis to, to 
hold on, I shouldn't have changed the camera angle. To preempt Terry and Mark, actually, as much as anything else. Um, no, I point out my flaws and I say, hey guys, you know, I'm not a particularly good player, but here it is. All you need to be able to do is play an E chord, which is something you can learn in 15 seconds, and just go, Brum, and then this is the middle pickup, Brum, etc. Brum wasn't built in a day. <laughs> just... Neither were any of Ben's guitars. <laughs> that was quite fast to leave it, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so just say, hey, look, I'm not a player, uh, I'm a maker, and uh, the, only, the only thing that I would say is, uh, as a non-player, you do need to find a player who, who can tell you how the instrument should feel, because that's, that's the difficult bit. So that's like setup, intonation, etc. Yeah, I mean intonation. That's science. That's that's okay. easy. But setup, it's it's more about feel than anything else. Did tell us what he does. I just have to find the comment. Okay. I'm looking for I'm looking for my sanding block, and it's currently In here. <laughs> uh, here we go. Another one. I am an auto paint rep and build oh. guitars. I think he added that. That's really cool, actually. Yes. Super chat to say I'm an auto paint rep. Red and I That's cool because uh, you have access to cool paints. Yeah. <laughs> and Aceron responded to say, I'm pretty sure Sweet Tea saves puppies and rainbows for a living. Nothing else makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> And he, Sweet Tea's responded, that's funny, man, that's my side job. <laughs> that's just a hobby. <laughs> okay, so I'm quite happy with how that worked out. It's, uh, yeah, I like that. Uh, onwards with, onwards with the uh, little sigil thing. I got a couple of super chats from Terry. Okay, Terry. About the box from the car boot. He yes. He says, so in future it won't be burn it, but shoot it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and suggestion for American watches to reduce postage. Hmm. Form a group and buy together up to the weight allowance for shipping. Okay, so... Shipping is always going to be expensive, but yeah, if I ship pallets over, that's something we can do. Basically, after last night's live stream, I uh, I was spent a lot of time thinking I need to I need to sell most of my watches and just use that money to invest in getting a uh, um, a warehouse in America. Or not that I could buy a warehouse in America with my watches nowhere bloody near. Um, a there are companies that. <clears throat> forward things on and, and, and stuff it's just uh, there isn't that much of a margin in our tools and it's really difficult to do but I've got to do something that much is obvious okay um, this comment might be a little bit too late but Spike, Spike's Frugal Fixer Shop uh -huh. wants to know how did you create the template for the logo can I see it closer uh, it wasn't a template. It was uh, uh, it was what was left after cutting an inlay out another day. And uh, yeah. Didn't that go? Uh, that was then used as a template for the Ukraine baritone. Yeah, and the bit, the logo you cut out. Didn't that go onto Boba Fred? Not a clue. Entirely possible. Yeah, that's the one that had all the aluminium on it, so... I, don't, I honestly don't know. I can't remember. 
somebody the other day said, oh, you should do the, the Boba Fret um, neck angle thing. And I couldn't actually bring it to mind. I'm, I'm on the next two or three builds at this point and my brain's like, what are you talking about? I need to Google that. Which makes me feel a bit silly, to be honest. Uh, Paul needs, in response to that gun box and cleaner thing. Yes. He says that's a push through cleaner. Not seen one since I was an army cadet. Uh, however many he, he garbled years ago. That was for a 303 Lee Enfield. The, the actual one I've got is for a 303 Lee Enfield. That's what he says in the comment. Cool. Can you write that down, please, Lisa? Or maybe the one that he remembers. I, I'll send you the comment. You can. Also, super chat from Madam Coyote's workshop. Okay. Uh, to me, I've been admiring your, admiring your editing skills for a really long time now. You do an amazing job, and it is noticed. Thank you for the work you do. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. They're not wrong. You are a little bit too much of a perfectionist for your own good, sometimes. Says you. Yeah, says the man who's just... <laughs> <laughs> Pot kettle? Yep. This camera's getting in my way, it's being a bit awkward. What do you guys think? About that, or... Terry Love says, I'm pretty sure, Ben, that is a 12 gauge cleaning rod, too big for a 303. Of course it is, of course it is. Okay, that whole conversation was while I was seriously concentrating on what my hand was doing with this very sharp thing. Yes, it's, it's large, of course it's for a 12 gauge. Um, should we test it out? Can you get the shotgun from the corner? Do you have a shotgun? <laughs> if you can find it or reach it. You probably can't find it or reach it. I've got an antique shot, uh, decommissioned antique shotgun in there that I need to actually Is it in sell. in a case or out? Or? No, it's just out. It's just sitting there. Um, you probably won't be able to reach it. No. It's fine. It, it, it is what it is. It must be. Okay, so yeah, there we go. But a pull through, a pull through cleaning rod in ebony. It's a beautiful thing. So I am. Um, yeah, I'm working in my head on the set, on the fact that I've got this space here and I'm building an office slash hand tool studio in that part of the room and timber store and bits and pieces here and uh, I love the idea of having a sort of a, a trophy room a collection room with random stuff like that but uh, we'll see anyway question from the big unit I am at your beck and call how does one sharpen a gouge that tiny? One does not simply sharpen a gouge that tiny. I don't think I've seen a slip stone that small. Uh, so a V-gouge, a V-gouge is actually not that easy to do, but it's two planes and uh, uh, yeah, the, the easiest option is, there are triangular slip stones that go in there 
I ha there are slip stones that small for getting inside, but also a the gouge sharpening technique where you carve the shape into a bit of wood and use that to burnish the edges. I don't need to do it right now, so I won't. Um, and then diamond files on the inside, just a, a light flat diamond plate uh, on the flat surfaces inside are, is, is really good. Um, but just for, just for fun, just for fun, let me find an actual small tool. Uh, Off. No, that one's broken, it was so small. What about the top row? Uh, no. Okay, so... Okay, so this is the V-gouge. Uh, and as you can see, that's V-shaped. And really good. This is a very well-worn swan-necked gouge. And this is a veining gouge. So this hasn't been sharpened yet, but that's more traditional. It's a U-shaped gouge. And it's properly tiny. So, so yeah. There you go. Isn't that great? I love tools so much. You would never be able to tell. Off topic and back to the uh, shotgun. Terry yes. Love says next project, turn that shotgun into a guitar. The only reason I've got it here is because it's got, uh, it's it's really old and it's got some beautiful checkering, gunstock checkering on the, on the stock. And I want to build a guitar inspired by high end uh, yeah, that sort of aesthetic. What I really want to go is, do is go to, there's a couple of companies in the UK that do like really, 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 really high-end uh, gun work. And one of them is not too far from us. I've completely forgotten the name, of course, but one of you will know. And I would love to go visit their workshop and take that as inspiration. Um, anyway. Oh. I think with the oil in there, that's going to look quite nice. And if it doesn't, we can always pick it out with uh, a, in the dark powder. a pen or something. Glow in the dark. Did they do glow in the dark pens? Probably. Probably. We sounded like <laughs> brother and sister there for a second. Oh, it's creepy, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, don't do that again. All right, um, well, there we go. I'm going back after a digression. I'm going back to standing. What do you guys, uh, what do you guys have for me? Ask me a question. By the way, this base will be at the uh, At Maker Central and at the Birmingham Guitar Show uh, if you want to come and meet it in person if you're in the UK. I love how you say meet it. Bases of people too. If you want to meet the complication, is that right? Yep. The complication is certainly, certainly going. Original Nebula? I still had Original Nebula sold years ago. Oh, good. It sold within 12 hours of the video, anyway. Oh, Bob's going to be there. Um, yeah. I think that was a bird we were listening to. Was it a cat? Cat. Oh. Cat bird we were listening to, guys. Comments, queries, criticisms. P 
PPE, yo. There's a conversation you're not included in about pickups. Um, um, companies charging too much for pickups, namely, where is it? Oh, I don't know. The pros and cons of buying pickups versus figuring out how to make your own. Franz Truter has just joined the chat. Hey, hey. Hello, what's cooking, good looking? What did I miss? I don't know, what's cooking, Shalita? I got um, chocolate brownies in my bag. Evil. Okay, the... What's cooking is some sounding, even though I promised not to, I apologize. Uh, Sander broke last night. So didn't get it quite perfect. So I'm doing stuff by hand. Uh, remember we had some tear out in the neck? That I've just uh, found again. It's mostly gone, but does need a little bit of work. So I'm going to pick out the white glue and put some dust in, uh, which we've already done on the headstock. So we're there. The pros and cons of making your own pickups versus buying them. It is incredibly difficult. Uh, for your first 10 sets of pickups, you will probably waste 30 pickups worth of wire, for example. If you're going to, seriously, it's one of those things. Uh, it reminds me of the meme where uh, some carpenter says, oh, my... My partner is, uh, saw this in, in Ikea or in Home Depot or wherever it is and uh, you know, wanted to spend 500 quid on it. And I was like, ha, I can make that. 1,000 pounds later and four months down the line, she's got exactly what was in the shop. That, that is pickups. And you, chances are you're not going to get, in my opinion, the same sound. Um, now, they are fairly simple the construction etc 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 but it's a sort of a black art and uh, it's a difficult thing um, now yeah so so that's the thing now we we make pickups of crimson and uh, they are not inexpensive uh, i don't think they're anywhere near the price of some that other people charge but uh, the fact of the matter is that there is a, a hell of a lot that does go into them someone in the chat recommended wilkerson that we use in some of the guitars uh we don't use them in the crimson guitars but our students do use them uh okay so i've just poked out a, a gap there you can't really see what's going on where are we um Um, yeah, Wilkinson pickups are generally pretty good, and in fact, these days, uh, these days budget pickups uh, tend to be a lot better than we think. Okay, so that was some, some tear up from the router. Let us, I've, I've taken uh, the glue, the white glue that had spooged into it, a dot of Super glue, a pile of dust from the neck. Masking tape. I know, I should have done it first, but I wasn't thinking. Okay, masking tape, finger, tap in. And that fills the gap, fills the hole, and guarantees that there are no uh, no air pockets or soft spots, etc. And then once you've done that, just a little bit more medium, I think this is medium thick actually, on the top.
followed by accelerator. Accelerator doesn't affect wood or raise the grain or cause any issues pre-staining, does it? No. Because that was just a really big drip that went all the way around the neck. Yes, that's no, fine. I'd still need to sand the whole guitar reading anyway, but essentially, uh, no. Okay, so that there is an obvious repair there. But uh, under finish, it's not an issue. Especially, especially looking at what the uh, what the rest of the guitar looks like. Uh, now, some accelerators will affect finish if you're spraying onto a finished guitar. Uh, you will melt nitro, for example. Uh, I think this accelerator that we are currently using does melt guitar finishing oil or melamine, one of our finishes. Um, didn't you get a drop on Jasmine's guitar and you had to, you buffed something out with the polishing liquid? I think that was Jasmine's guitar, wasn't it? Yeah. Which need to be finished. Um, I have to read this comment and uh, I think you might have to apologise. I apologise in advance. <laughs> Wolfwood Guitars. Hey. Hello, Crimson Guitars Extras and everyone. I stayed up to watch last night's live stream and was two hours late for work today. Oops. <laughs> Do I need to apologise for that? I don't think so. I don't think Wolford Guitars is sorry though. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that it's uh, necessarily our fault. I don't know. Life choices. True. Says the man with head tattoos. Forgetting to um, set a, an alarm. Uh, super chat from the big unit. Hi. Uh, ben, at Easter yeah. dinner, I found my great grandma's antique hand mixer. Cool. It's very similar to your hand crank drill. Yeah, I know that. I took a pic if you want to see. Yeah, please do. Uh, stream at crimsonguitars.com. Um, well, there's a reason why they're called egg beater drills. And super chat from Sweet Tea Guitars. I thought you were at work. <laughs> I'm sending you an Instagram message in a bit. I'll tell you the short version of my story. It should be an interesting read for you. Oh, it'll tell you a short version of my story. Fantastic, I look forward to it. I will. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, Mrs. Bunn has uh, expressed an interest in potentially taking over my my Instagram and the stream email address so that these things actually get seen and replied to on a more regular basis. Uh, this neck is still a little bit faceted. Just, uh, just finalizing the next shape here. That's a pretty shot, isn't it? The sweet tea says he's on his way to work. So. Fair enough. Wolfwood Guitars says I should have started work at 3 a.m. No, I wasn't sorry. Ooh. Okay. Uh, what do you do at 3 a.m.? And yeah, there's the 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 worst job I ever had was yeah when I started building guitars. I obviously needed to subsidise, and I did security at one point. And uh, um, yeah, I had the closest to death I've come has been driving when far too tired. Uh, working during the day, building guitars, and then doing security at night, and then 
driving home at four o'clock in the morning and just, uh, yeah. One of the stupidest things that I've ever done, to be honest. It didn't last long. Across me, <laughs> <laughs> what came first, the drill or the egg beater? Mm -hmm. The drill has to be the drill. Yeah, probably right. Well, I've got drills here that are sort of 400 years old uh, that work on the same sort of principle um, and then those evolved into more traditional egg beater style drills and after that fact uh, egg beater stuff all right we're, we're, we're coming to the end of this it's, uh, it's coming together uh, Levine is with us all day today. Hey. The day off. Day off today. Happy day. I, I I'm not sure I've ever had a day off. You uh, can give yourself days off. I'm, I'm envious. So yes, Marsha, we're going to be getting on to, uh, to finish at some point. I do need to make a back plate, but we can do that while finishes curing and see what happens. Ooh. Using a, a mechanical sander is much easier. And I should be wearing a mask at this stage. This is creating a bit more dust. It's just so big. Anthony Cunliffe says there needs to be a one-off side channel of Mr. Bun and his power tool only cakes. Power tool only what? Cakes. I think that sounds good. <laughs> I'll consult. So I am... Um... I used to make uh, sort of a, a Bailey's style Irish whiskey cream thing uh, for fun. And uh, this was when I was a, a student and didn't have any money and we didn't have a mixer. So <laughs> I did have a power drill and uh, I, uh, I ended up I ended up gaffer taping a fork to a chopstick. The chopstick went into the power drill and that was my mixer. Worked really well. That fits with Daniel Coyle's comment. Historically, people have used forks and chopsticks to beat eggs and balloon whisks for larger or denser foods. Mechanical whisks are just convenient rather than essential. Yes, I agree. I have a question on staining from Stephen Clark. Okay, yep. Yeah. Febreze works quite well. That joke. No, that's for odors. Is it? Yes. I just pulled that. <laughs> Show, showing my <laughs> showing my absolute ignorance in this in this matter. <sighs> right, two part question. I applied water based stain to a headstock and finished with penetrating oil using Ben's 
wet dry application technique to try ah. for a semi gloss. Okay. But it pulled a lot of stain. Part two. Can I add stain shots to my oil to add some colour back? Yes. Or are my options to sand it back or live with this colour? Um, no, you can actually uh, you can stain the oil. Absolutely. I uh, have and you can also just add a coat of stain uh, as it currently is and then add more oil unfortunately i've since had to adjust my method i'm very gentle with the uh, uh, with the wet and dry as i apply it uh, but it does over a stain tend to tend to pull the stain up and because you're sanding through to the stain uh, I've now started saying do not use the wet and dry trick um, if there is a stain underneath because it, it will, you've got a high chance of messing that up. Even if you built up layers of oil and then use the wet and dry on yes. future coats? Yes. Okay. Just go, go, if you're going to do that, go very gently. Garage Master Guitar says it's no good. Rather than watching Ben and that neck reminds me that I should be in the garage sanding mine. Take your uh... Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people watch these live streams while actually building guitars and that, that makes me very happy. How many people do we have? Because it, it is a Tuesday, I'm I'm interested. Two hundred and twenty four. Okay, so a, a fewer than fewer than usual. Because obviously people have to work, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's cool. Super chat from JS Trucking and Guitars. How are you? Thought you weren't doing sanding on the stream anymore. I see sanding a lot. Meh, 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 meh. No, I uh, I apologise. Uh, there is no getting past. The fact that I am not doing what I said I would do. Uh, my uh, my sander last night started blowing the uh, uh, blowing the electrics in the workshop, which slowed everything down, and I didn't get to the stage where I wanted to be. So unfortunately, we are here, and I couldn't come in this morning first thing because I was at the dentist. Oh joy. Hi. Same question again. Ow. About the wet and dry technique, I think. Okay. What about oil over spirit based stains? Would that draw up the stain in the same way? It does, yeah. In fact, it's worse. Because the uh, spirit based stains are based on spirit and there is a, um, a an element of uh, spirit in the oil. Basically, there's a carrier that uh, would react with it. So, so yeah. But the issue that we're talking about here is predominantly. Oh, I'm nearly there. It's predominantly the using the wet and dry technique to uh, to burnish the top of the oil, and you've got to be really, really gentle when you're doing that. unless you've got a natural finish. In which case it really does give you a much better result. All right, so I've sanded 180. I'm on 240 now and I can still see some, <laughs> get some pieces I want to get rid of. What you laughing at? Franz Truter. He's I'm cool. gonna mispronounce this word. How do you guys make these video deadlines whilst having a social life? What's social life? Yeah, I don't have a social life. Lol, I'm still Other on my children. editing of my second GGBO vid and my neighbour will book some me if I work at night, lol. Uh, yeah. 
Um, for editing, I recommend headphones, definitely. If you're building at night, I don't know what to say to that. Uh, introduce your neighbour to the channel and see if you can get him involved as well. <laughs> All right, here we are. This is coming together. Okay, keep the questions coming because uh, I don't want you guys to get bored. Unless the ASMR really does do it for you. It's not my, uh, it's not my thing. Flobius says he really likes his new bass. Who? Flobius. Flobius, I will remember your name. I think he's implying that what you're doing is his bass. Um, I think you're going to have to fight Lisa for it. <laughs> Definitely. But, uh, but yes, I mean, hell, I, I'm so tempted to keep it myself. There is a... I do have another two pieces, I think, at least one, of this uh, ash here that we use for the body. And uh, in all seriousness, we could uh, draw this out on the CNC, on the, in CAD, and put it into production, if people are interested. Uh, I like I like I like the shape very much, and uh, wouldn't mind doing that. Lisa Harshberger says the sound of sanding and talking has been part of my morning dreams. <laughs> Fantastic. Question from Terry Love. <sighs> yeah, sorry. This thing's so much bigger than I'm used to that I don't have enough room back here and I keep on knocking things off the bench with my ass. It's, um... I told you. Put the vice at the end I'm out. I'm working here. Anyway, Terry Love. Terry. Jammy Dodgers or milk chocolate hobnobs with the mug of tea I'm making? Uh, with tea, uh, hobnobs. I was going to say jammy. Yeah? And then, um... NTO Steve says Terry needs a poll. <laughs> Just do a poll to Lisa, go for it. is almost perfect. Hold up. Uh, Jay is trucking super chat in response to his earlier super chat. I wasn't complaining. I want you to keep the sanding process live on these live stream builds. I do. Uh, the, this bit I don't mind necessarily. Doing the hand sanding and talking to people, uh, it's cool. The, the machine is not fun. Opinions. Yeah, I'm full of opinions. No. Why not use epoxy to glue fretboard since PVA contains water and can swell and neck for the first couple of weeks? Um, most, okay, there's not that much water in PVA. Uh, it does, 
yes, it can swell the neck for a certain amount of weeks. The issue is entirely about the amount of cleanup that is involved. Uh, if it was a choice of PVA or something else, then I would go with super glue, uh, to be honest, and just be much more careful about the application of the super glue uh, in such a way that I would avoid putting the super glue and getting it spooging. Uh, epoxy is even harder to clean up than super glue once it's dried and you just end up spending hours scraping and cleaning and scraping and cleaning and then sanding fretboards while frets are in place and it's just not fun. Whereas the PVA you can get to clean that you get to clean that off and uh, uh, it's quite quite quick. Now the amount of water in there technically could swell it a little bit but we've got very dry fretboards that um, wick it away very rapidly and it, it off gases and it's, it's gone fairly soon in my opinion so it's in my opinion it's, it's not something to worry about but very good question so Paul needs <laughs> Uh, he says, I'm quite surprised that the earlier tapping on the headstock to settle CA glue didn't summon either some worms out of the base body or at least EVH's spirit to mm -hmm. the feed. Um, I like that. And another super chat from JS Trucking and Guitars. Hi, hi. He says, yes, it was the hand sanding that is ASMR anyway. If using the machine, skip it, lol. Definitely do not skip it on the hand tool only build. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the nice thing about that is that that's being edited, so it's, uh, it's not an issue. Okay, uh, the neck is, is now <laughs> nearly done. Terry Love says, too late on the pole, the Jamie Dodge is already open. It Fair was, enough. What does the pole, what did the pole come out to? 71% milk chocolate bob milk. Ha! So the end grain is the issue here, I'm just... Uh, Just going in. So I'm standing at 240 here and I'm not going to go any higher. I don't, I don't see the point. There's an entire conversation between two guys in Afrikaans and I wish I knew what they say. Uh, also, Spike's Frugal Fixer Shop wants me to tell you, uh -huh. thank you, I got the 24 inch truss rod under the heel on my base cool. with a long drill bit to extend in a tidy 18 inch slot. Thanks for the advice. No worries. That's a, I'm, yeah, I'm glad it worked. And question on the tuners. Sorry, I don't know who said it, but it was, oh, Dimebag1, is it just me or is the last tuna hole offline with the rest of them? And then Buck Rogers says, please ask me about the headstock, it seems like there is placement issue with the holes, does he intend on using reverse tuners? Uh, no, the tuners should fit. They are almost lined up. That's interesting. Next camera to So here we go. Hold on, let me do that like this. There. So the middle two are about a millimeter in, which surprises me. 
Uh, I used a template on that, but it was uh, an old template. Uh, where are my chairs? I'm not using the traditional giant tuners. That's those. So, no, I've got uh, more than enough room. Goto Resolite 350s. And they really are. There's nothing to that, actually. I was at the car boot sale yesterday and uh, bought a, for three quid, I bought a Bigsby style, uh, a big, a roller bridge for a Bigsby tram kind of thing. For three, just, unfortunately the guy had a wire pedal in the morning and I wasn't there early enough to, shocks, shocks and pain. Okay, so I came in here and I'm not happy with these shapes so going in with the small Iwasaki file and uh, the thought actually crossed my mind to just leave it because I really want to get on to the next stage and I can't believe I even thought that you've got to do everything you can to be as good as humanly possible So there's going to be a little bit more sanding there. See, that's fairly square in here. Oh, I'm going to have to go off now. <laughs> uh, Joe Thornhill, question all in caps lock so I'd see it. What's in the jar between the accelerator? Pickle juice? People juice? Pickle juice. Um, Actually, no, it's people, people juice. Um, it's just water for... Um, uh, oh, that was it. Uh, yes, it's a jar of water for when I'm using the Pro Edge to sharpen uh, chisels and things. I need to dip them in, in water to cool down. So, yeah. That. Super chat from JS Trucking and Guitars. Mm -hmm. I've got another antiques store I'll be shopping around in later this morning. Cool. I'll take pictures of the vintage tools I find. Yeah, please do. I I really, 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 really need to work. To move this part of the workshop into into the new extension where I've got more head height. I want to have the space over my shoulder, I just don't have enough room. Mrs. Bunn, how are you? I'm okay, do you want food? Always. Cheese roll? Uh, yeah, it sounds gorgeous, thank you. Okay, should I you sorted? You want to make everybody's, everybody's currently saying hi to you, by the hi. way. Another question from Uriel Sage. Hi. Uh, have you ever vacuum clamped a fretboard or a top? What's your opinion on that versus mechanical clamping? Uh, done properly, it's absolutely perfectly fine. Uh, it's I've actually got a vacuum, and a really sexy antique vacuum pump over there. It's just gorgeous. Uh, that I want to get. Uh, up and running. I'll show you guys in a second actually, it's cool. Oh, that's where my mask is. Sandbag mm. one says, mmm, cheese roll, yum. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want tea and Jamie Dodgers to be honest. <laughs> I can offer you uh, coconut biscuit based brown. I would love to take you up on that after my cheese roll. That's alright. Oh, Vincent Vanderbilt wants a BLT. Mm, that sounds good as well. So, uh, yeah, Tanya's not on the uh, uh, on the keyboards today because uh, the children are still on their Easter holiday and. Uh, 
the seven-year-old does require some level of supervision. I haven't heard from Mark Jennings in a while. Is he all right? Um. I just assumed that uh, from the way it started in the morning that we were going to get a lot of uh, a lot of flack from him. What you haven't got any recent texts? <laughs> Terry love. Sorry, Jamie Dodge is all gone. My theory is a packet is a portion. <laughs> Valid theory. No, that's your hypothesis. Hypothesis. It needs to be uh, tested out by lots of experimentation. So more packets needed. Yeah. Oh, that was awkward. Yeah. Much better. <laughs> Siri Love wants to know if they make straight jackets for seven year olds. Yeah, it's called duct tape. Um, I'm fairly crafty. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Jennings, is there a link between seven-year-old needs supervision and then thinking of my name? Yes, there is. <laughs> Very good point. Well spotted. <laughs> I didn't realise. I think the link is the word trouble. <clears throat> Jay is trucking guitar says, what the heck are jammy dodgers? Marshmallows? Uh, Jeremy Dodgers are naughty. But delicious. So it's a sort of, a, I suppose it's a shortbread biscuit with jam. Yeah, it's, it's a shortbread a, biscuit with jam in the middle and a, a hole a, in the centre. So it's a, a, a jam full, biscuit, full biscuit base and then like a donut shaped biscuit top hole with the jam. Yeah. All right, now, baby. Damn it. Hey, I forgot about this. This is a really cool tool. It's a sanding stick that uh, I found uh, when I was clearing a workshop through vintagetoolshop.com. And essentially it's, it's a carved stick, flat on one side, curved on the other, and you, there you go, put the paper in like that, and you've got sandpaper that's uh, acting like a half round file. It's, it's, it's really cool. We should make it as a product. But uh, anyway, or you should go and make yourself one because you guys can do that. Jay's Trucking says, so technically it's an Oreo cookie? Oh, better than that. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't need to. I really don't need to. That actually feels okay, apart from the, the rough edge to the chamfer. But I want to add something to the chamfer. Wow, I'm not used to doing that with my left hand. Bonk. So. Cramp her down, Jim. Okay. This is... This is a John Green gouge that I've sharpened. 
It's a fairly weird handle. Iron ferrule. John Green. Uh, John Green was around since before they had the letter J. John Green? I, I O H N. Uh, I'm just waiting. Sorry, I'm just Googling. Lisa Harshberger, so love how Ben is making my base and sanding its curves. Okay, so 18th century is John Green. 17 something. I'm not entirely sure what his dates are, but this gouge is from the 1700s and it's one of my favourite gouges. Is that not supremely cool? Or am how I just a weird long geek, do you weird think person? It would have been when it was first made. Not much longer. <laughs> Doesn't get used to huge amounts. Um, anyway, so I've marked that out. I've got the John Green gouge going. And uh, yes, I know I'm cutting against the grain here. Don't shout at me. So there's a super chat from Cliff Evans. Cliff. And no message. I'm waiting for a message in the chat so Chris Cliff sorry Cliff Evans if you write out your message I will read it to Ben Ow. and Terry Love says Ben stop fondling Lisa's base but I'm fond of it <laughs> <laughs> so Cliff's message is can we have another fundraiser for Ukraine? It has just been reported that the Russians have hit over a thousand targets overnight. Uh, I think that... The, the issue that I've got with what I did was that uh, we raised... I haven't finalized the figures of the uh, super chats because that hasn't come through i haven't got the final accounting from google yet but we raised about fourteen thousand pounds after fees if people had donated directly to the charities then it probably would have been sixteen thousand pounds and i actually feel, i don't i don't want to do that again uh, for that reason i would rather i would <sighs> When I set it up, it was going to the uh, British Red Cross Ukraine DEC appeal, which meant the government would double the money up to 20 million pounds. And by the time we did it, three days later, um, uh, the that figure, the, the, the cap that the UK government had set had already been surpassed. So I thought, OK, we'll do this and then it'll be doubled and losing the fees isn't going to be such an issue. It, I don't feel I don't feel happy doing that. So, uh, yeah, it's I think it's better for people to donate directly to charities of their choice. Uh, I've also come to the conclusion that this is cross-grained nonsense. Um, thank you very much, Tony. Tanya is currently listening to, I think, book seven of the uh, book seven of the Wheel of Time series, which I got her into. How many books in the series? Nineteen. Whoa. It is an epic, epic, epic series. Um, okay, so this is cross-grained and nasty. Uh, I've done what I can, but I'm going to go and use a rasp in a second. It'll be better. Uh, but uh, that's not to say that my thoughts are not with uh, with Ukraine and the people there, and uh, I continue to be outraged and horrified. All right, I'm going to mute my microphone here. Uh, keep the chat up. Keep asking me questions. I'll be talking through the uh, microphone up at the top there. I will try not to eat on Lisa's base. Tanya also brought me a cup of tea. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. But no jammy dodgers. 
No, Terry so, ate them all. Terry ate all of the available Jamie Dodgers. Yep. <laughs> Anonymous Botch says, I'm reading the Wheel of Time series at the moment. It's epic. I've, I've, I've read it uh, now at least four times. fly you were looking at was very near the mic from <laughs> it was a, it was a big uh, Talitha you're on camera super uh, super chat from Jay's trucking and guitars are you going to copper or brass leaf all of the dark spots to make it look like the worms were burrowing for gold are you sent here to tempt me I think you've been sent here to tempt me the roadie. I'm not going to mention the bridge ground hole. You mentioned it last week, we drilled it. <laughs> That's why he's not mentioning it this week. Mm. Uh, super chat from the big unit. Book question. Mm. When reading the Dune novels, do you stop with Chapter House, Frank Herbert books, or do you read all the additional books written after he passed too? He's chewing, give him a second to swallow. <laughs> that was a particularly large mouthful. <clears throat> I have read a few of the James Herbert ones, but stopped. Uh, I am not a fan of horror. And uh, James goes too far in the horror direction for me. Uh, and so I just, it does not do it for me. So, yeah. The story is fine, but the detail, a bit too much for me. What do you think of the movie series? The new one, amazing. Mm. Is it... Is it copying or too close to the original Dune movie or is it in keeping with the actual book because I haven't read the book don't look at me like that read the book you're not allowed to talk about this subject fine it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful it's visually stunning as a series as a, as a, the, the new movie is, is, is really really good NTO Steve says, fix small jewel-like pieces of stone deep into the wormholes. So the other day I put a video out saying, don't, don't do this at home. On that guitar, I inlaid individual sections of sterling silver into each one of the gaps of, uh, of, of the guitar and it looked amazing. And yes, I am now tempted to do something like that on this one, but you guys are just horrible. Horrible, I tell you. I know. We're enabling. <laughs> enabling. Good point. The big unit says, I thought the new movie was incredibly faithful to the novel. Mm. Uh, Lisa says, don't forget the ground wire hole. <laughs> <laughs> the new movie was incredibly faithful to the novel. Apart from the fact that Paul's mother was <clears throat> utterly portrayed and entirely and completely wrong. The entire thing about the Ben Jezerit, however you pronounce it, is that they're calm and collected and in control all the time. And they decided to have her played as a sexist uh, version of somebody who freaks out and... and uh, 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 where that's entirely against the training of the witches. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it was just... She shouldn't have been showing any emotion at all. That was That's what they were about. They're calm and collected and cool and... Da -da 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 -da. And uh, she was crying and, oh, and panic and... Uh, Etc. Despite the fact that she 
she was powerful. Damn it. It really pissed me off. Other than that, it was great. I'm going to have to rewatch the movie because I don't remember that. There, Lorenzo Faglia agrees with you. The mother is completely well. Mm-hmm. Super chat from David Loveland. Have you listened to Wheel of Time on Audible? It's awesome. I've read it twice and listened a few times. Well, <clears throat> no. I was going to. And the problem is Tanya listens to it out loud every now and then. And uh, uh, she, basically I'm catching snippets of it, which is, I, w- I wanted to do it on my own again and start the whole thing and just ah, for six months. But now I'm catching snippets and I'm going to have to wait another six months or so to va- start forgetting the bits of the stories that I have now remembered as a result of this. It's horrifically annoying. I yeah, have yeah. got a special mind. Brain works uh, with the whole everything else, I can watch a movie or read a book and know I absolutely love it and remember to a certain extent some of the salient points, but the actual detail rapidly gets removed from my you know from my brain. So I can reread the Wheel of Time a dozen times and uh, yeah. I won't remember all of the specifics until I actually hit the chapter like, oh yes, this bit, I love this bit, etc. Sorry. There you go. Tweetha, you're on camera again. Are you wearing the necklace that Sweetie gave you? Yes. Cool. Um, Paul Need says, my mother wasn't a dune. (laughs) And then a super chat from... Casey McDermott. Hmm. Ben, Talitha, all. I can't believe I missed Q&A. Shame on the house of McDermott. (laughs) You've talked me into audiobooks. I've started with Dune also and love it. Great guitar build-off video number one coming this week. Excellent. Looking forward to it. The thing with audiobooks is you can get so much done uh, while still being entertained and achieving things. You can. Unfortunately, it's Talitha can't because she's listening to me talk. <laughs> I have to listen to music if I'm editing with you. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm nearly there. Energy. <laughs> Demon says, okay, going to charge my Kindle. I have the whole series, Wheel of Time. And Uriel Sage says... See you in six months. Uriel Sage says, Ben, let's see the antique vacuum. Hmm. Yeah, I'll pull that out. I'll pull it out uh, later when the bench is clear. I need to hang the base up at some point, so I'll do that. Franz Truta says, I would much rather watch the movie or series than read the book. Ha ha. Wheel of Time series on Amazon Prime is awesome. It is the millennial way. Mm. It is, but listening to the audiobooks, you get so much more. That's always the case. Even the Lord of the Rings book, the movies were, yes, almost three hours long, but they didn't get half as much content. From no. Give me Tom Bombadil. <laughs> Wasn't he in The Hobbit though? No. No. That's Terry Love says, leave the holes alone, but have a pole if you must. But the holes look good as they are. Mm. No, I like it as it is. And a super chat from Adam Dutton. Adam. As a fantasy fan, any ideas for an epic loot for Yaskia Dandelion in The Witcher? I love the modern punk traditional folk blend of the music in the series and wonder if that could be reflected. It would be incredible. I would love to do that. Is it Yaskia or Jaskia? Oh, don't ask me about pronunciation. I can't... You know me in names. 
Yeah. Um, I would love to do that. It would be supremely cool. And yes, I could sit down and have about a dozen ideas. Thornhill uh, about audiobooks. You can also have soothing celeb voices reading to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're getting into the jokes. Owen Kelly, a book about anti-gravity would be fun. I'd say you wouldn't be able to put it down. Nice. Best yeah. <clears throat> All right, Talitha, you promised me a brownie. You've only beautiful. just finished your chips. What? No, that's no excuse. Go get the um. No, I'll uh, get the vacuum when I have an empty bench. Uh, Fukumi says, this live stream is my audiobook while coding HTML. It eases the pain. Coding HTML? Surely that's... Um, well, I suppose it is still something that uh, has to be done. Crikey. Ooh. Super chat. From A M C or A Mac. Will there be lots of accessories, etc., to buy from Crimson Guitars and Vintage Tools at Maker Central, as I'm going and want to get some good stuff? Yes, absolutely. Um, in comes Jasper. Uh, yes, we're taking the Vintage Tool Shop. We're taking a bunch of guitar, a bunch of guitars, uh, a load of wood offcuts and bits and pieces like that. And uh, uh, yeah, all sorts. It should be cool. I'm not sure how many tools, how many crimson tools we're gonna have in stock, but uh, we've. <clears throat> You've just reminded me. Actually, I need to get in touch with the, with the lads and see how we're doing uh, staff-wise. We're uh, we're hiring more more tool well more production people to work in the uh, uh, tool and kit guitar making departments. Now the question is, how many people am I triggering now by? using my rasp like this. Vintage and need to be moved onto the other I think Jasper realised that uh, Tanya brought some food down and uh, just wanted to come and make sure that uh, all was good with the world. There was anything you needed to clean up. Yep. It's one of the benefits of dogs rather than cats. Yeah. 
cats are unreliable. Very unreliable. Uh, Lisa Harshberger wants to know if you have read David Edding's Bulgarian or Malorian series. After 30 years, they're still one of her favourites. Yes, I have, and yes, I agree. Again, it's a, a series, they are series, sorry, that I've read multiple times. Scott Bowen says, I'm a cabinet maker and I use my files upside down most of the time. You're all good, Ben. Excellent. And Nikki Van Driel says... And congratulations, because cabinet makers seriously are way more skilled than the average, specifically electric guitar builders, like... Yeah, respect. Yo. Super Was that awkward? It James felt awkward. Trucking and guitars. James Trucking says, since this is a bass build, small bit of knowledge, artists always refer to their guitars as axes. Gene Simmons of Kiss, his bass is actually shaped like an axe. Yes. Um, and I don't think it's exclusively basses but um, but yes that is a very very cool uh, instrument in particular okay let's get this over the edge of the thing I'm still waiting for that um, I'm brownie doing it, I'm doing it. sleep is just Casey McDermott's asked drawing if there's this out. been a recap oh, thank you um, a recap of what you're doing what you've done what's that it's coconut biscuit. So the base of the brownie is the coconut biscuit as well. Oh my god! And I just put it down in mahogany dust. I love it. What's the peewee at the very least? Okay, let's have a recap. Where are we? Two and a half hours in. That's a very good point. So what we did? Was it nine hours the first time? And then seven. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to. Somebody, somebody check it out and let us know. Okay, but here's the recap. Okay. Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to the base. Uh, this is currently being built on the live stream Crimson Guitars Extras channel on Mondays, apart from Bank Holiday Mondays, where I live stream with an audience. And uh, it's an awesome audience. This is day three of this base build. It's a relatively simple instrument. A uh, one-piece ash body with all sorts of inclusions and uh, bits of raw bark. It's absolutely horrible to work with. My god, that was sharp. I just stuck a hole in two different... Two... Excuse me. Ah. I was about to give you a compliment, gosh darn it. Um, yeah, that bit really hurts. That's not, like, that's not a good idea. Um, I'm not bleeding. It's all right. Um, this is the third day on this. Uh, we are two and a half hours into day three. Fretless instrument with glow-in-the-dark powder in the frets. The slots, the, the, the side dots are brass with glow-in-the-dark powder in. The neck has been carved. It's mostly been sanded. It's a set neck instrument. We're carving more access to make it even more comfortable. And uh, it is almost due for some finish. That's where we stand. Uh, this guitar is, if you're watching the edited videos, this guitar is live. Uh, check the link below. You can own it. You can win it. Uh, there is a chance uh, via our partners raffle. Our partners? They're not our partners, we just use them because it's a fantastic service. So yeah, you can win this guitar, it's being raffled off. And uh, yeah, it's not a guitar, it's a bass. <laughs> am I allowed, because I'm totally, because it's a totally third party system, am I, am I allowed to enter the raffle? Technically yes. It would still look Weird, wouldn't it? I don't know if the public can see who. You're going to look weird. If I'd you have to announce. Won it. Well, that's the problem, and I'm not going to. Uh, if I can't announce that I've won it, then there's no point in me entering the damn raffle, mm. which is super sad. Um, anyway, we're nearly there. 
JS Trucking says episode one was seven and a half hours, episode two was six and a half. There we go, thank you very much. So, uh, seven and a half and six and a half, we've taken the halves off for talking and lunch. Uh, so, six twelve says 13 hours. So, we are 13, 14, 15, we're basically 15 hours into this build so far. And, uh, yeah, elapsed time. Davis says wine yesterday, brownies and cookies today. It's not good for the diabetes. Just thinking of you. Yeah, tell me about it. That's why I only gave him a small square of brownie. I'm just going to go into the corner and eat a brownie. No, I, I uh, yeah. I very much actually do need to just grow up and stop being naughty. So, Talitha, stop enabling me. Sure. Don't bring any more. Fine. Because I have no self-control whatsoever. Okay. In anything. Neither do I know bake the stuff. Send me, <laughs> send, send me vintage, vintage tool pictures no. or um, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> this poor lady at the Cobbie's Hotel yesterday, her husband was selling off her, his collection or part of his collection of watches. Um, all really interesting things. And I looked at pretty much all of them. And as we walked away, um, she thought that I obviously looked a little bit dodgy. And she was so worried that I'd make fun of them. She, was, she Tanya watched her. I'm there with, with two children. She thought we were grifters. Did she count all the watches? Yeah, they were, she was absolutely panicking. I, anyway, it is what it is. Lisa Harshberger says, as long as Ben remembers to send it to me, he can win the raffle. <laughs> and Terry Love says, a super chat, okay, if I bought a raffle ticket and won, and could, could I run an auction between Lisa Harshberger and Ben for it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fukumi says, Ben, never grow up. Embrace your inner Peter Pan. It will keep you happy and makes life more fun. Mm. What do I you agree. think of the brownie? It's, it's strange, but very cool. It was an experiment. Mm. <laughs> I'm an experiment. <laughs> I'm just wondering about the, uh, the carbs on the uh, on this. JS Trucking says at least it's not a specialised brownie. Mm. Not in the workshop, no. That would make for some weird guitar building. Oh, um, Zed Langdon Smith, I'm going to raffle the Is No Live competition. <laughs> mm. So, yes, it's not out yet. Sorry, my bad. Uh, that was being, hold on, that was actually me talking to the edited version, uh, which is going live uh, in probably two, probably two or three weeks, I think. I think, I'm not entirely sure. Um, <clears throat> so at the moment, I want to finish the entire instrument so that on raffle, we've got um, a, a link to a, uh, the, <sighs> actually, we could do a, yeah, we, we want to be able to link to the video of the of the full instrument so people know exactly what they're uh, um, uh, entering into a competition to win. So it'll be live in a few weeks. Uh, my bad. Terry Love says, Ben will never grow up. He's a guy. Guys just get bigger and play with more expensive toys. Mm. Yeah, you got that right. Although, well, I don't know. I think, to as a gross generalization, men tend to be less responsible <laughs> or intelligent than ladies. But uh, that is what it is. I'm happy with the snack. 
Um, so there's a super chat from RJ's custom shop, but no message. So please write your message in the comments and I will keep an eye out for it. And there's a super chat from Terry. Um, Ten pounds on behalf of a broke Lisa Hoshberger. So what, we need to give Lisa, sell her the guitar? I don't know, I think Terry's just super chatting on her behalf. Oh! Okay. Oh yes, Lisa said in a comment earlier, Terry Love, I'm so broke right now, I can't super chat today, so Ben would win. Mm. I've got a mouthful of cookie, hold on, I've got a thought. And it's an important one. Oh damn it, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be gone that far. <laughs> No, but I am also a comedian, so. Yeah. In my own mind. Yeah. <laughs> and Lisa's responded, Terry, love you, are so sweet, even if you want to steal my base. <laughs> So here's the comment from RJ Custom Shop Super mm -hmm. Chat. Uh, so after a full day of building and sanding bases, I come home, crack a beer, and proceed to watch Ben building and sanding a base. No wonder the family went to bed. No matter the family was for what? No wonder the family went to bed. This is the problem. We, we all have obsessions. Oh. Okay, I need some water. Okay, this is a very, very important thing. I seriously appreciate the Super Chats. I seriously appreciate the support. It is one of the reasons why we are able to do this. Um, you know, taking Talitha out of a day of work, <clears throat> actually editing and, and all of that jazz in order to do this. This whole thing costs money. However, it seriously worries me that there are people who can't actually afford um, to do that, uh, to send super chats, and it's it's not, I I, I it's something I worry about. And I, if if you honestly can't afford it, then please don't send super chats. Um, put your messages in all caps. Put uh, a great big uh, exclamation points and mention I don't know chocolate cake at the beginning of a comment that you specifically want Talitha to see. Or use an eye-catching emoji. That Something like that. We, catch we, my attention. You know, I do it because we, we, we love what we're doing and the fact that there is money involved justifies it to a certain extent, but it is not the be-all, end-all. And uh, I definitely don't want to be responsible for people not having enough money to pay things like rent and, and you know important stuff this is not important stuff this is fun and cool so yeah uh, if, um, and this isn't aimed at anybody in particular it's just a thought that has occurred to me uh, when i started doing the live stream the first live stream i did i didn't realize that we actually had super chats enabled um, or that anybody would would do it um, but it's become it's become part of the justification for having the channel, basically. So it is important to us, but not that important. So there we go. Um, Talitha's taking a photograph of Jasper, who is sleeping in the uh, extension in the sun. But uh, anyway. So anyway, uh, Lisa basically has uh, a few questions in in stock now. Levine sent a super chat Marcia. to say I have no luck with raffles but if I can ever afford one of Ben's bills I'll straight up learn to play the guitar <laughs> rather than let my fiance think I'm going to give it to him. Two words of art. 
thank you. And uh, this is... This is one of the reasons why I like doing the raffle, because selling a guitar for two, three, four thousand pounds, if I'm if I make one by hand, then the guys in the office want to charge lots of money for them. They they just do it. It's um, well, it's the world we live in. It's it's um, capitalism, I suppose, um, and I started building guitars because I couldn't afford the guitar that I wanted. I couldn't afford any guitar, really, much less the ones that I wanted. And here I am now building guitars that are and would sell for thousands of pounds. Um, and the reason why I love the raffle system so much is that it absolutely democratises it. And people like me, back then, when I first started, can afford to have a bit of a flutter. And if I'm building as many guitars and basses and instruments as I am now, that's, you know, a dozen or so opportunities throughout the year to potentially win something I've made for 10 or 20 quid. And um, it's worked out in the last couple of ones that uh, um, the amount of money raised, I'm not counting the, the Ukraine one, because that is the single most expensive guitar I've, or instrument I've ever created based on the fact that it was done for charity. But the amount of money raised through the raffle pro program has paid for the guitars and has been fine. And But it absolutely, uh, one of the guitars was won by somebody who spent 10 pounds, one spent 50, I think, and you know, 50 quid and you've got a three, four, 5,000 pound guitar. It's so cool to me. I also really don't like gambling though, so I'm torn. But anyway, let's stop chatting. Gustav who? Gustav Holmstrom. Gustav Holmstrom. Hi. Sends uh, emoji kitten in a box. Look at my interesting comment. Kitten in a box. I didn't know that there was a kitten in a box emoji. That's incredible. And then Fukumi. I'm reading this verbatim. Chocolate cake. All in capitals. Talitha, I super chatted Ben yesterday, but reminding you now, I still need need my collection of head tattoo plushies. <laughs> then we got emojis, caterpillar fox, rabbit, coconut fruit. Seriously, I could just imagine us releasing a head tattoo, sort of a, a, a me plushie, and then social media being full of people sticking pins in my eyes or something. <laughs> I don't know why no. I go there, but that's my don't immediate that. thought. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Peter Crossley sent the um, head tattoo emoji because he's a member. Oh, yeah. And said, don't know if this has been answered. Question. Do you use aluminium oxide paper or sandpaper for, for sanding? Or does it depend on the job at hand? Um, oh, and then it's your surprised face emoji. You've made a surprised Ben emoji. Bear has. <laughs> okay, I need to check that out then. Um, I have absolutely no control over what these people do to me. You, you, you know, you think I'm the boss? Uh -uh. <laughs> um, I don't often use aluminium oxide based paper. I don't know what this paper is actually. Um, yeah, it doesn't even say. Uh, we use Worth sandpaper, whatever it is. Uh, I don't actually know what it is, so I'm afraid I can't answer that. I have experience of cloth-backed aluminium oxide paper that where the oxide did not actually stay on the paper and it caused all sorts of issues and went off and stained the white woods that I was working with, so be aware of that. Um, test it and and uh, go from there. Okay, so this is the section there. It's now a lot less pointy, but that uh, grabbed me earlier. So I need to uh, chisel that off. So Lisa Harshberger says, <clears throat> I send super chats mm. because I appreciate these streams and everyone here. 
last night the talk about depression resonates with me and I was at one point suicidal. So, yes, I thank you. I do, I well, I really do appreciate that. I'm struggling with this saw. Hold on. Aha! Aha! There we go. I did not use the force choke on you. No, that was bare. In the uh, in the comment in the edit later. Um, <laughs> this is the problem. I do things like that, and I think, oh no, what, what are they going to do? Um, so yeah, last night we we were talking about um, depression. There was a uh, there was a comment, and uh, it got fairly fairly deep. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we've all been there. And uh, the 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 more we talk about it, the less demonized it will become you know in the uk here people don't go to therapy in the way they do in the states um nowhere near it, it's still something that seems to be um frowned about great paper don't need 180 and uh, yeah i think depression is something that needs it's an illness. It's a. It's something that's broken, like a broken leg or a finger or, or a cancer, and it needs medical intervention, uh, be it drugs or talking. It should not be something that's uh, avoided. And I'm Lisa, sorry that you went through that, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa said in, in the next comment, the 3D printing and now being part of CBDO. Is part of what keeps me going. I appreciate you both. And we we appreciate you too. Um, okay, that's all over the place. I don't like that calf. Um, alrighty, where are we? Uh, three hours in. I'm going to turn my microphone off. Run up to the house, make myself a cup of tea, and uh, I'll be back in a second. Talitha, be good. David Loveland has suggested a Funko Pop, and I made you a Funko Pop. You did, it's beautiful, but it's delicate. Yeah. A kid got hold of it the other day, and you've lost half an eyebrow and the toe of one of your shoes. <laughs> hmm. I should probably have it back here then. I'll fix Kids. it first. I don't like it. Dirty little children. Can I have some more water? You may. Grammar. Grammar is everything. Hey, Mitty. Oh, sorry, uh, Terry Love, I hope Ben isn't using his wife his wife's dressmaking scissors to cut sandpaper. Nope, those are his own. Um, <laughs> those are his own uh, scissors. But I don't have any pranks. Where are the squirrels? Let's get the squirrels. Bumping cameras all over the place. do with the other squirrel? Ah, oh, there you are. What are you doing on the floor?
Bumblebee wants to get involved. Don't know why. Girls just want to help. What sort of props should I bring for the squirrels next week, Gustav? I don't think they've been fed for a while. They might need some um, nuts. Since his wife's listening to We Are The Time, I don't think... You forgot my water. What, what? You forgot my water. Ah, oh, damn it. Would you mind running, I'll getting both our waters? Yeah. <laughs> There's it's too much going on. I can't, can't keep things in my head. Have you taken a photograph of the squirrel? Yes. Yeah. There we go. This is okay. What, what is Bumblebee doing? He wants to join in. Bumblebee is not a squirrel. He's tired of the squirrels getting to come out all the time. He's stuck wedged behind some chisels. Hmm. Okay. Um, greetings, greetings, greetings. I am satiated and refreshed. Now, at this stage, what have I missed? What have I missed? Actually, come to think of it. Nothing. I missed nothing except Talitha messing around. Instructions for pranks, and I need to apparently bring props for the squirrels to play with. No, seriously? <laughs> Yet. I have no sense of humour unless I am the instigator. That is sadly true. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, uh, where are we? So. Um, Jedi Master Squirrel says, My Padawans are at it again. <laughs> I like it. Um, so we've got a hollow here, which is nice. And then the rest of this is concave the other way. And uh, it's not ideal. So I like that hollow, but I need to sort that out. And it's these sorts of details that are just important in, in a build. So I'm gonna go with the Rasp, potentially. Let's see what we... No, nope. I'm also going the wrong way, so it's going to need to be... It feels really naughty to be pulling the rasp like this. But hey, what can you do? What we can do is do it properly. 
turn the base around the other way. Questions, comments? Uh, Paul Needs says, I send super chats when I can and I reckon the personalized answers I receive far exceed the value of the message to me. It's a bargain, to be honest. Thank you. JS Trucking Guitars says, oh, come on, Ben. You know voodoo dolls only work if the victim believes in voodoo. So finding a plushy replica of you with pins in it won't affect you. Um. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I haven't tried it yet, but we can run experiments. You've never actually tried voodoo on me? No. I thought I knew you. I was, thinking, I was thinking of the Funko Pop, but it's plastic. I don't want to shove pins in it. Is that plastic? Yeah. I thought it was ceramic. It's plastic. Okay. But I built it up with air drying clay, so... Like That's why I think it's ceramic. Okay. The bits that are fragile are the bits that are put on. I honestly thought that the whole thing was a ceramic. That's why I was so worried about it being broken, because you spend so much time on it. It's such a cool thing. asking about the cows so I said nope there's no cows in the field today and Nikki Van Real uh, says so the cows have been eaten by the fox as well <laughs> yeah we've got some big foxes here this wood is not easy Today is our 48th winning anniversary, and we are spending the day watching you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, congr 40 congratulations. That is, uh, Tanya and I had our, I think, 16th uh, on April Fool's Day. And uh, I feel lucky to have made it that far without... Um, Her killing you. Yeah, I, I've survived this this far. Um, 48 years. Yeah, congratulations. And serious, thank you serious for achievement. Thank you to spend your day with us. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've all made questionable life choices and, and that is that is certainly one of them. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Pete C has years. also joined Cool Beans. Celebrating his anniversary and... And joining the, the members. Well, thank you very much. I honestly, I'm just standing here going, what would my life look like? What will my life look like? Having been married to Tanya for 48 years. I just have to go Squirrel with a head tattoo. Talitha, could you just pass me the uh, computer and then I can uh, do this while um, yeah, doing comments. I don't need the mouse. I think a squirrel with head tattoos is a merch from a shop. Looking. I think that's a pretty good idea. I, uh, the whole squirrel thing is somewhat taking the piss out of the ADHD thing, which is actually not what I want to do, <laughs> really. It's not the ADHD thing, it's your digressions. Which are 100% ADHD. But it's you. You've digressed pretty much from day one of the first videos you ever made. Okay. I'm sorry, I actually stopped listening to you. I was thinking about something else. Bye. <laughs> Digression. Um, 
Yeah, you do need squirrel emojis for the chat. Absol absolutely. Okay, so I'm, I've got this. Uh, I've got this carved looking fairly flat now. By the time I got to sanding the back down yesterday, uh, I had blown the uh, blown the power several times and uh, did not feel like doing it again. So that's pretty cool. So we've got a. It's going from a concavity to flat, and that's absolutely fine. Thank you very much. Oh, there's tools behind. Okay, so I'm just evening out this edge. I think you can see that it's not, not quite ideal. It needs to be a bit smoother. And then we're pretty much, pretty much good to go. Uh, Lisa says you said it was the sanding machine. What was wrong with it, please? Essentially, I'm fairly sure that there's an issue uh, with the power lead shorting out. And uh, it was intermittent. It wasn't turn it on, it immediately goes. It was a movement thing. So uh, yeah, I just need to sort that out, uh, which is uh, unfortunate. But uh, yeah, we can we can deal with it. It just uh, it just scuppered the evening because uh, I ha only had about an hour and a bit of time before last night's live stream in which to to sand this instrument and glue the neck in, and uh, I only just made it. There's uh, there's rather a lot going on around here at the moment. Terry Love taunting me saying, okay, next week Ben may get on to applying the finish. I think you're right. No, uh, the finish will be done by the end of today. Emphatically. So. Yeah, instead of getting a sanding machine out, I'm going to use this this block with some coarse paper on and see how quickly that uh, deals with that cutaway. Uh, it's a really cool, it's a really cool tool. Ooh, there we go. Paul Neer says, Squirrel definitely not TTP. They is what they is. Uh, no one means they, them unkindly. I'm. I'm absolutely sure. I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about there, uh, but no, I know what you're talking about. I'm not sure the context. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay, so uh, isn't it amazing how? Uh, isn't it amazing how the entire the, the, the world has changed with regards to that uh, sort of thing? Um, it's it's just it's just incredible to me that uh, that we've gone in uh, such a such a short space of time from intense bigotry and. Um, an exclusion to a point where it is absolutely um, just a part of life that um, that whole <sighs> LGBT, LG, 
I can't even say it anymore. I'm half thinking about how this thing gets folded in. Um, it all works, and it's it just is what it is. It's part of life, and it's and it's broadly accepted, and getting more and more accepted day in day out. Which you know, when I grew up in Zimbabwe, being gay was illegal. Uh, okay, this paper is not playing ball. <laughs> I'm in control. Okay. Andre Silva saying, Ben, the finish will be done by the end of today. Everybody else saying, oh no, it won't. Mm, I need new workshop people. Terry Love has come in with a super chat saying, I'm amazed that the laptop keyboard still works with all the sawdust about when my keyboard throws a wobbly over a few biscuit crumbs. Terry, an entire packet of jammy dodgers is not a few biscuit crumbs. Paper, but this is actually working really well. And yeah, this is a Lenovo ThinkPad, which even the even the relatively modern ones are known for being fairly indestructible. Ah. Okay, Talith is back. Nikki Van Drill says ThinkPads also survive a heavy Belgian beer. G'day Ben, this is from Caleb O'Byrne. Uh, it says, G'day Ben, I have an old vintage tool which I'm assuming is an old plough plane. I can't find a name anywhere on the thing. Any ideas? Thank you for everything. Uh, send me an email. Send an email to shop at vintagetoolshop.com and uh, Safi will be able to tell you what it is. And if she can't, she'll show it to me and we will we'll figure it out. Brian Jenkins asks if I ever met Melvin Hiscock. I did not. Um, I'm afraid he's uh, no longer with us, so so I won't. But his was one of the... oh, my phone's going. His was one of the two two books that I read when I first started. <sighs> when I first started building. Grained, not having fun. Okay, today are you taking that computer back, are you? I could do. Um, or are you just going to run away and leave me to it? Yeah, I was thinking of going home. Maybe. Can you decipher this? It's a bridge, earth, drill. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll send it to your phone, you can have a permanent reminder. <laughs> I preempted this by drilling it last week. You guys just, whoa, so mean. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> there you go. Have fun. Oh, there we go. So this scraper is doing actually doing all right. At least here. I don't know, this, this whole process is horrific to me. I liked an earlier iteration with the flying... the profile of the boat. No, no, so did I, but... I can't have a logo I can't inlay, and again, that's a logo that I can't inlay, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. I, we, we, we literally cannot have a logo that we can't inlay. Um, the I like, but you've got the laser cutter out. I haven't seen it in here. Yeah, so every single guitar that I build here has to have something in it that I can't do by hand. Mm. No, it's, it's one of those things. It's a very cool, that's a very, very cool logo, uh, and I as was the one um, earlier, but I think the crow imagery is just uh, not working for me at the moment. Is your microphone off? Uh, yeah, my microphone's just running the batteries. Well spotted people. <laughs> uh, I love Lisa Marshberger. DVG says, this is going to be an amazing base. Lisa responds, so glad you see the amazingness of my base. <laughs> hmm. oh I know what I'm doing. And Vax Headroom says, that scraper doesn't seem very sharp. Dr. No, it's, it's not. It's not. But, um, but it is sharp enough for what I'm doing. And this one is sharper than... Uh, <laughs> the first one. Fine, okay, let's shut up if you're right. Oh, I just found a cup of tea. Oh, my microphone's still, still not on. Test. Test one. Oh, for crying out loud. Super chat from the big unit. Test. Yes. How's your handwriting? Inlay your signature. Test one. If we judged people's professions by their handwriting, then would definitely be a doctor. Um, I don't have very good handwriting. Honestly, what I did on the headstock here, the crimson swoop with my BC that has been the logo forever. That's the logo. I haven't actually seen that. It's just the... Uh, no, it's not that. It's here. The, the, the shape of the guitar is currently the crimson logo mm. uh, with the word crimson in it. 
But this is a, a continuation of Crimson, which is that logo. And then my BC somewhere else. The, the BC there, that's the logo. But that's not the branding that, or? I think that has to be the logo at this point. It's, it's what has been on my guitars for years. And this is what we're doing. We're taking my guitars out. I'm just going to sharpen this quickly. Vincent van der Vaart, did you just flip the boot? Me? Never. I don't even know what that is. Jesus says, isn't that your thumbprint? Vincent, on the internet, how dare you? <laughs> Okay, so leveling beam, nice and flat. Rocket Punk Art says, what about the logo being made like the Nebula 2.0, resting on top of the headstock with small pins, nailing it there, like on some of the clocks you've mentioned? Yes, um, very expensive to do. Now, with this brand, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when I started building guitars, it was because I couldn't afford the guitars I wanted. Uh, now, I do want to make instruments that retail at three or four thousand pounds, but I also want to make instruments that retail at, you know, say twelve hundred, that we actually make in house in the UK, which is almost impossible to do. I need to have something that is easy um, and, and has meaning as well. So essentially what I've just done on here could be done on the CNC machines with a little V cutter, could be done inexpensively, it's recognizable and essentially what I'm doing here is, is an experimentation for, for that. Uh, I think, in reality, I think in reality what I actually need to do is re is sort out the, vid the, the, the tool shop, the Crimson Tools and the Crimson School with extra branding and keep the guitar shape for me. But here I am thinking live. Which you probably shouldn't do. You Not should while have I'm. Have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Bear and discuss it. Well, yeah, exactly. Okay, so essentially, you need to have a perfect square, two sides flat, and then the edge also nice and flat and uh, a leveling beam is 100 percent the best method i have ever found for doing that and then you end up with a beautiful burnisher this is a burnisher that a fan made me and um, and sent uh, sent to crimson i love well the whole thing is just incredible and then yeah burnish away uh, problem is, I need to move the base so that I can do that. So Terry Love says, if Lisa Harshberger does end up winning this base, uh, 400 people will shout, FIX! Yep. Hey, I mean, the thing is, there's not that many people, actually. The chances are much, much higher than, uh, than you would think. All right, so with the scraper, we need to work hard on the side first by going flat.
and this is pulling that edge out that way. And then it's a case of, whoops. Go like that, or you could put it in the vise. And that works as well. Now, this is not perfect. because I'm after quick stock removal here, not a perfect finish. Terry loves Super Chat. Terry. Have you ever thought of branding your logo, as in with a branding iron? Yes. Keep in keeping with bird. Uh, yes, I love that idea. Um, I have, uh, I have. Uh, in fact, I spent, back when I couldn't afford it, I spent about 300 quid, when 300 quid was closer to a thousand pounds, on having a, a brand made and it was just too big. It was so massive, it didn't take the heat. It was a proper waste of money. Yeah, but that was then. Now things can be done a lot more delicately. And... Yeah. Jason Smith. Uh, Jason, hi. Yo Ben, apologies for no messages. Have been watching the live streams. Just had a struggle with the black dog for a couple of weeks. Um, it's absolutely not a problem. It's good to s well, it's good to have you back. Um, I need to. I've got a concavity, <laughs> and that's... <laughs> wrong scraper. It's the wrong scraper for that bit. And the right scraper just fell down the side of the thing. Oh dear. Forget it. Um, Wolford Guitars would like to know if a sharpening steel would do the same thing as no. a burnisher. No. No, a burnisher is... Uh, hardened steel that is flat and polished and really hard. Uh, a sharpening steel has ridges on it and uh, would essentially actually destroy the scraper rather than uh, make it better, sadly. Got it underneath the guitar neck. One of these edges is so much sharper than the others. It's incredible. All of the guitars are sounded just this bugger. <laughs> so, honestly, the... <sighs> I'm trying not to make a dirty joke at this point. A burnisher, just get some silver steel and, and, and uh, heat it up with a, with a burner. Um, the... You can't say just heat it up. How hot? How what visible does it get? Red hot? Does it go blue? What? 
how do you know when to stop? You could extrapolate and explain. <laughs> Mummy, Talitha is shouting at me. Um. <laughs> She's actually watching the live stream. Is she? I'll no. wait for a text message telling me off. <laughs> uh, okay, yes, you need to harden that steel. I don't know exactly, but you need to harden it and quench it and do all of that jazz. Uh, I am not a blacksmith. I would just look it up myself. Paul Neve says he's seen people burnish scrapers with the side of a screwdriver. It's not hardened properly. Uh, most screwdrivers, the side of most screwdrivers are not actually hard enough. Uh, so it will get something, but it won't be... Um, in instead of making the burr properly, it will deform it to a certain extent and it will get it sharp, just not as sharp as I've got this one, for example. All right, there we go. That is actually, uh, I should have I should have hit with the scraper first, to be honest. Uh, Paul Needs has a question about scraping. Mm -hmm. When using a scraper, do you ever get ripples on the surface due to grain variance? Uh, you can do, but instead of going like that, change your direction and go across the grain and uh, you can fix that. But you'll notice that I didn't use the scraper straight off. I filed to something flat first and then and then went with the scraper. Super chat from Sean Durkin. Sean. Speaking Thank you. more of burning it, have mm. you looked into burning with ammonium chloride and water? It works amazing. Talitha, could you please photo of that for me? Uh, it sounds irresponsibly dangerous and fun. Uh, no, it's not something I've ever looked into. So the finish I got of that scraper was actually better than I'm getting off the sandpaper but I need the whole finish on the entire instrument to be homogenous. So here we are. I'm going over the whole thing now with uh, 240 grit paper. And uh, then we'll move on to, I don't know, finish maybe. Or we could call it a day and, you know, prove you guys are right. I don't want it to be longer than 24 hours, no. Where, where are we sitting then? So it's been going for three and a half hours here, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, we're only at 16 hours or so. Questions have you got for me then, Peter? I'm trying to find more information about ammonium chloride and 
chloride in water. No, we'll, we'll Google that later. Yes, but they are also worrying me at this point because uh, guitar finishing oil is going to seep into them and then when I think everything's cured and sorted, pop back out again. Uh, so I'm actually wondering about using a different finish. Yeah, I've done that. French in canola, heat to 375 Fahrenheit in an oven, cool, done. Yep. And is that, is tool steel 01 then? That's what you said, 01 steel. Yeah, that's why the question is, is tool steel 01 steel or not? I don't know. Sorry, silver steel, um, which is what most people would be able to find a nice, uh, a nice silver steel rod which could then be turned into a a good burnisher because that's what this was made out of. Sean Durkin says with ammonium chloride you basically mix it with water, paint it on, let it dry, then apply heat and it burns the wood. Okay. So I, I think I've seen that with um, what is the wood burning hobby called? Pyrography. That's it. You can get a pen, it's almost like a marker, where you draw your design, let it dry, and use a hot air gun, and it looks like you've burnt the wood. That is so cheating. In the py pyrography thing. In my opinion. It's just chemical. Yeah. Anyway. Ian M says 01 is a member of tool steel. You put that in quotation marks. I don't know about silver steel. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that's uh, if that is uh, what it is, to be honest. Okay, I'm just having this one last look at this. We do need to make a, a back plate, really. Uh, if you remember, we glued up some, some ebony the other day. And I'd like to make that before we get to the finish. How would one get a guitar neck in an ordinary oven? One would not. Move to Texas. The whole place is an oven, isn't it? Um, yeah, there's not enough room. Also, I suspect Beth might have an issue with that. That was unnecessarily sexist, just assuming that Beth does all the cooking in their household. I think it's actually the cats that are in control there. Yeah. Um, Telepathically at least. Yeah. I, I once suggested to Tanya that uh, I wanted to try torrifying some wood at home and uh, it was a hard no. She actually beat me with a bit of wood. It was, yeah. With a bit of wood you wanted to torrify? Yeah, yeah. What a terrifying no. experience. Well, she didn't, but, you know, help me. <laughs> At the moment, I know she's not watching, so it's okay-ish. <laughs> that makes us seem even worse. It does it. Oh, boy. Right. 
Change subject. Please. <laughs> Four minutes is low. Question from Matt Lang. Matt, it's been a while. Thoughts on using polonia wood. Beautiful stuff. Tried a sandberg the other day and it weighed nothing. Supposed to be the fastest growing hardwood. Well. Um, yeah, I mean, technically it's called a hardwood, but it's not very hard, hence the weight. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's good stuff. And uh, as long as you can get a finish that you are happy with in such a soft wood, then 100% I say go for it. Talitha, could you take a photograph of that actually? I need to see if uh, my guy can get more of that. Your dealer. I didn't want to say that. And then you just went and said that. I'm so sorry. My wood guy. Sounds worse. All right, everybody. There's suggestions on what you can call the space. Um, someone said the holy base, and uh, Carl B is suggesting the hobnob. <laughs> Have you had any thoughts? I try not to think, to be honest. Yeah, that's something. Problem. Okay. Daniel Marquez says ammonia chloride is not that dangerous in itself, but please use gloves, gas mask, and eye protection. When you heat it, it will release both ammonia and hydrochloric acid vapor. Yay! Just what I've always needed. Says the man not wearing a mask while creating a cloud of dust all over everything. Okay, we're nearly, <laughs> nearly there. So, Paul needs to answer my own question from the earlier question, how does one fit a guitar neck in an ordinary oven? Okay. He says, a headstock veneer would easily fit. As for sexism, I used to do a large majority of the cooking when I w just gigged and Beth just nursed since the accident she does. This which it's only at this stage when everything's sanded that you need to actually be more careful. But yeah, um, yeah, Paul. Um, I bet you would rather do all the cooking, to be honest, than have had that happen. I'm not turning my back on all of you, I'm just turning my back on all of you. Ignoring stuff. So Terry Love says, I thought it was called the Lisa base. <laughs> Paul Mead says, it's the Capybara base. <sighs> I still don't see the Capybara thing. Okay, good, good. Ah, uh, yes. So there's one area that I haven't done anything to yet. And this workshop is too small. Ah. There's just sent you the sketch you sent him. You might say he's got it quite No no no, I know, I know. I'm not I'm not I'm not um 
Although when I sent him the sketch, I did say that I've got the... Um, no, that's just not working. I got the dimensions of the wings wrong. Um, a very rough sketch. Yeah, accurately. Yes, and that's the problem. I had got the wings wrong, I think. I have come to the conclusion that having the image in there, we can't do. Uh, I really like the font. Yeah, you I just can't inlay the font either. Uh, it's much easier. Let's not talk about this on yeah, the so uh, the big unit, comment from the big unit, to say, I don't know why everyone calls pine a soft wood. Mm. I've been hit with a 2 by 4 2 by 4 before. There's nothing soft about it. Uh, soft is relative. <laughs> In comparison to your head, um, may, maybe it isn't. But, uh, yeah. It's... Uh, I kind of want to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> so Love says Ben needs to move the HQ to this workshop and he can take over the HQ. I don't think Tanya would like that. Oh, that's Because uh... if you move to the HQ, she's taking over the workshop. <laughs> so you remember the other day when Orson came in and said that Tanya had said when the kids move, when the kids leave home, she's going to kick me out and take over the workshop. Apparently that wasn't what Tanya said. Apparently that's what Orson suggested to Tanya. Oh. Mmm. Yeah. Oh dear. Apparently. The big unit says wait. Did they just call me soft-headed? <laughs> I wasn't sure if I did or not. The whole time I was thinking about that, it's like in comparison to your head, is the wood soft or hard? No, I called you hard-headed, which is just as bad, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like awesome more and more. He's yeah, he's cool. His um, his work ethic this weekend was amazing. If if I could have adults like with that sort of work ethic working for me, uh, or more adults with that work ethic working for me, we would have no problems taking over the world. All right, so I hadn't sanded. I hadn't sanded in there. Still, just a little bit to do, but I think that's. Have you posted photos of the outside to show everything no. you did? No, not yet. Um... Yeah, everything awesome did. So at one point, I was painting the second coat on the front of. The, uh, the shed and he said I'm going to do the side of this workshop so it's on three meters four meters it's four meters long the external of this thing so great big expanse with a window and everything and uh, yeah he said I will I'll do the whole side before you get the second coat done on the front and he bloody well did as well just Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So this instrument is here. We need to do. We need to do a back plate. Now we do. So the big unit's two by four comment. Yes. Uh, now the rest of the story is I worked as an electrician for decades before I ever started teaching. Okay. Dodging construction lumber is part of the gig. Ah, okay. Good. At least there wasn't uh, intent behind that. That you know of. Generally people 
if they're going to pick a fight with somebody as large as you, they want to go all out with the first hit, I think. I mean, he has told us that he is, what, 6'4", six, 6'5"? Six, the, the word big unit, the name big unit is because he's... Literal, he's yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Stuff's moving. Ah, there it is. Template and the wood that we glued. Oh yeah, I remember. It's got that um, sort Which of. Which you're going to fill with glow in the dark powder, right? Absolutely not. And super glue, right? No. Poop. And I'm certainly not pooping glow in the dark powder. What do you want? <laughs> so you're not part <laughs> unicorn. Damn it. Part unicorn. I'm all unicorn. <laughs> Shall we change tact? Yes, let's. Um, so yeah, this is just a case of hmm. I'm going to do it from, yeah, I'm going to do it from the back where it's actually flat. So I can get the outline. Okay, first of all, first of all, I play in a nice flat edge. I missed the workshop over the weekend. But really you were don't. outside the workshop. It doesn't stop me missing one of my hand planes. <laughs> So that's good. Now I've got a hard edge to go up against. Are you going to be needing the belt sander for that? I am going to be needing the belt sander for that. Language, language. Oof, it's nearly being mean to Lisa. <laughs> Am I running out of lead? There's no lead left in the pencil. Are you sure I didn't? You tamper with my pencils, you are in trouble. Trouble, I tell you. Except mummy on you. She knows where you sleep. It doesn't move fast enough anymore. She's not fast enough, what? <laughs> she doesn't move fast enough anymore. Ah, oh, true. Okay, I bet she could find your uh, chocolate stash or something. Hot chocolate stash. Oh, hot chocolate stash. That's fighting talk. Okay, so there was a little gap there that I had to change. So, there we go. Peter Crossley says, I'm sure that bench wobbles more and more every live stream. Yeah, damn bench. Uh, I was working on my I was working on my old bench at headquarters the other day. 
I think you've all seen the videos actually. And uh, yeah, made me very happy. Isn't that just because it's on a solid concrete floor? That's not a concrete floor anymore, but no, it's just a very, 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 very solid bench. Which makes a difference. Okay. Everybody. It's official, I've decided to start a religion. Um, no, uh, we need to move on to the bandsaw and then the uh, spindle side up. So this is going to take a little bit of organising. Do we have any questions? Yeah, a joke from Marcus Dresden guitar. Hey. <clears throat> when an aircraft carries boring planes, is it a plane, plane, plane? And M says, well, the answer is plain to see. <laughs> And we'll just put the camera here, and I'm now struggling to get through behind the camera. Ah. Okay, so I'm going to turn my microphone off. Talitha needs to down that. I'm going to get a sort of a four-channel thing. Marcus Jason responded. Just doing little bun, bun fun fun. <laughs> yeah. I put my eyes at jeans on, I can't hear you guys anymore. Shouting out the world. I need a face. Okay. So essentially, uh, I'm going to put the base down here, bump it into the ceiling, of course, and then it's just a case of sanding and testing and sanding and testing.
All right, Talitha, you need to have a look at the comments and see how many people are smarter than me. Hey guys, it's all about the bass, about the bass, no treble, lol. <laughs> Wood bench shading. I use a yoga mat. What's okay? No, it's not a child screaming, it is a child who's found that most distressing of items a recorder. How many people noticed what I did? Greg H says 451. There are currently 451 people viewing. 451 likes. No, 451 viewers. Invisible man, invisible base, lol. What did you do wrong? I drew the outline on the back of this and then proceeded to install it with the nice flat bit on the front. All of the worm eating stuff is on the inside because I'm an idiot. Sorry. Um, Paul Cook, cut it back to front, question mark. Got it in one. Damn it. <laughs> Fix it in post, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that I uh, that's that's a pity. Uh, that makes me sad. But um, yeah. Foolish boy. The big unit says we were too busy staring at the bench. Did you have the camera angle wrong? Did I have the wrong? Oh, was it the wrong camera? Were you not looking at the uh, sander as I was doing it? That's, I now get the, I get the references. Oh, well, that's a pity. And this is why, Talitha, you shouldn't have been on your phone. You should have been looking at the comments because you would have been able to fix that. Employees spending all their time on their phones. She doesn't have a comeback for that. I was checking the cameras and yes, that explains the comments about what the foam is and someone saying I use a yoga mat. Yes, I've considered using yoga mats in the past as well. So essentially we now don't have any footage of that being done. Redo. No, you need to not have your phone in the bloody workshop. I got footage of you doing it. Oh, that's all right then. Actually, all is well. <laughs> Uh, there we go, so that's fitting quite nicely. <sighs> yeah, okay, cool. So we've got that down. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. So you were looking at camera four rather than camera one. Damn it. Terry Love says, people were talking to the bench, got smarter replies than from Ben. I need to take about a millimetre off. Now, the thing is... While... Did that take out your water bottle as well? It did. Uh, the thing is, I actually quite like the idea of just beveling the edge and leaving it slightly proud. Um, but uh, that would then make it look like it's been glued on rather than inlaid in and it's sort of, it's like um, there's a watch company who they make, a th I think it's 30 odd thousand 
dollars or more. Uh, it's called the Swiss Alps watch. And essentially it's taking the piss out of the luxury market. It's an incredibly H Moser, is that the company? Hold on. Oh, I lied. It's used forty three thousand pounds. Used between thirty and forty thousand pounds. It's a Swiss Alps watch. It's a mechanical watch uh, that looks like an Apple watch. And you would never be able to see that this thing is a really, really expensive, primo, primo luxury watch. Because it looks like a freaking Apple watch. And I, I just... There we go. I remember where I was talking from. That's the same thing. I've inlaid this, but I'm thinking about leaving it proud so it would just look like a piece of ebony screwed onto the back of a guitar. That's all someone needs to look at the internals. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a holy... Yeah. <laughs> Crikey. Can anybody guess what I'm going to do now? <laughs> Redhead17 is using a lot of warning symbol emojis to get my attention and the word of chocolate all in caps lock. <laughs> nice. Is there a reason why any logo can't be laser etched onto a headstock like the writing on the template? Um, no, there is no reason that we couldn't use laser to do that. And for our cheaper range of instruments, that's probably what we're going to end up doing. But for for the handmade guitars, it needs to be inlaid in Mother of Pearl, etc. Uh, I need to be able to have a logo that could be physically inlaid. Um, or something like that. Need is a strong word. Haha! <laughs> It was my accelerator that also hit the deck. <laughs> uh, the big unit. Tape and superglue it to the bench and plane it thinner. You know what you're on about. A redhead uh, uh, 17 from the laser edge, the logo comment. Mm -hmm. Uh, he says, I meant for the lower cost custom guitars. Okay, sorry, yes, but so the problem is that we've, we've designed, we're working on logo designs here that could only be laser etched because they're so complex. We need to have one that looks great uh, inlaid as well as, as well as lasered. But uh, no, you're absolutely right. Okay, so on this side, I'm just taking just taking a little bit off. Now, that's the wrong time for this. I have reached the point where I need to sharpen all of my planes. Surely I've done plane sharpening videos before multiple times. Sure of it. Okay. <laughs> Terry Love, sharpen all of his planes. See you in three weeks then. Yeah. Got it in one, Terry. If he's late for Maker Central, you know why. Actually, I need to take I need to take some tools to make a central.
Okay. That way. All right, so we burnish the tape down. It holds it better. Line of super glue. Accelerator. And then you line up one end, line up the other end. And this means that the super glue isn't going to get onto the wood, if you can help it. And pretty soon, you're good to go. Now, if I was thickening a piece of wood to perfection, I would have a piece of paper underneath or two strips of masking tape. Uh, but as it is, I'm not particularly worried about microns. Marcus Dresden Guitars wants to know if James Blunt came in the workshop at night and touched all your planes. And then he says, okay, now I should stop. There just is no answer to that one, is there? Don't stop. You're beautiful. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I'm just uh, <laughs> using this as a depth stop. Of course, my cavity isn't even it's uh, it's shallower at one end because we've actually got a bit of a curve going on here Jokes. <laughs> I think I'm the bad so jokes sorry. are the ones that absolutely guaranteed to be read. It's that time of the afternoon, so everybody give us your best jokes or your worst. Lita, in the future we need to keep a running list of cool people or things that have happened during the stream. So for example, the couple who are celebrating their 48th wedding anniversary by watching us, whose name I've now forgotten. But I wanted to mention them and say, hey, I wonder if those guys are still watching, etc. And I've forgotten their name because I'm a horrible person. Paul C. It's Paul C, is it? Mm, 48 years. She's better. She's better than me. Well, he's just commented as well, saying, "Does the prospect of having to sharpen all your playing blades make you want a Spitfire?" <laughs> I've always wanted a Spitfire. Um, no. I I quite enjoy that process. The issue I have is the. <sighs> like today, I can't stop really and spend a half hour sharpening a plane uh, or three. Pizzy, okay. Okay, that's good. I thought I was going crazy because I was sure Paul C was. Yeah, sorry, Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot going on. Okay, so now this should be closer but not perfect, and then I will have to do the other side 
So yeah, I didn't really plan that. Properly. Nice. Lisa says, I don't think Ben realizes quite how much he changes from metric to imperial to metric to imperial. Dot, 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 dot. <sighs> the guitar industry, people talk in imperial a lot. And, I, and I'm aware that most of you guys, many of you guys are in the States. Should I drop it this time? No. Ian M says, I think it's plain to see Ben's planes aren't flying. He's scraping the bottom of the barrel instead. Okay. So I need to take off about a millimeter all the way around now. Phil Wilde says, I had a similar issue with a cavity cover the other day. I put it in place, then went at it with a leveling beam until flush with the body. It took forever, but it worked. This is the thing. So uh, I've foolishly already sanded the body. Um, I was... Uh, I'm not sure what I was even thinking. Ah, Pete C. Sorry. Oh. To interrupt before I lose the comment. Okay. Let's see, says Pete and Nancy celebrating the 48th anniversary wanted to add my wife's name so she won't feel left out. Nancy, thank you for putting up with Pete for so long. We, we all appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for choosing to spend your special day with us. Yeah, seriously. So, cheesy jokes are the greater. <laughs> ah, that makes me very happy. <laughs> For the greater gouder. It's even worse. That's an obscure reference to to a movie with misspelt words as part of the joke verbally being said. Jorn, uh, I hear Ben had a royal visit from Madrid and he's still hanging out in there somewhere. Rain in Spain stays amazing in the train. <laughs> Ooh, Tutankhamen. Mm hmm. If you notice that the notice is a notice, you will notice that the notice is not worth noticing. <laughs> Yes, I need to replace this bench, like fully, 100%. So, Pesty Pesta, from the earlier Spitfire comments, says, yeah. Spitfire themed bass, do it. Terry Love responded to say, Spitfires were cool, but I like the mosquitoes better, all wood. The big unit says, a Spitfire themed guitar and an 810 Warthog themed bass. 
Ooh. Yeah, that sounds cool. The word Warthog makes me want to do a, a Halo inspired guitar as well. That would be cool. Didn't you. You used to make little model planes mm -hmm. at school at Balsamwood. Did yeah. you ever make a Spitfire? Probably. I know you made several biplanes. Um, you must have made an F1 fighter jet. Yeah, I made all sorts of stuff. That was my first. I used to sell them. They were scratch carved rather than kits, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, worked out quite well. There's one kid in particular, he collected these planes that I made. It was good. To know with you, what you do with all the shavings. Do they compost? Uh, shavings do actually compost very well. Um, so yeah, there's that. At headquarters, we turn them, we we burn them, uh, or or they go to the. There's a riding school behind us, and the larger shavings go there. We burn the dust. Really, what I want to do is uh, make composite tops out of them. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a process and a half. Rocket Punk Art yeah. is a man after my own heart. He says, "Oh no, I just had an idea. Make a travel guitar entirely out of pear wood and sculpt hundreds of little feet on it. Maybe add a mahogany tongue somewhere. You'd have a literal luggage guitar." Mm -hmm. It's uh, something that I have considered. It's the uh, making a bunch of tiny feet by hand that would be a problem. I'll help. Okay. Tiny bit raised, but that's fine because uh, still have to sand it. Sandy Drosdick says the problem is finding sapient pear wood. And Tutan Carmen says do a Halo inspired guitar and call it Halo there. Yes, I'm just making sure that the right camera is on so my withering look gets to you. <laughs> um, Okay, all right, we're good. Um, I am going to have to sand this ebony down and then go up to the house and wash my hands before we move on to the finish. Uh, ebony dust is just horrific. We circled back to the conversation we were having last week, thanks to the big unit. Mm -hmm. why, would it, why do we say read like need but read like dead but the spelling doesn't change? Because the English language is evolved and is perverse and strange. Yeah. Rene Monsoyo chimed in with lead and lead is worse. Paul needs route and root. Yeah. Rub smoke and salt. Hey. Uh, this is in quotation marks. I joined a carpenter's class last week. Cool. Have you made anything yet? We've only just begun. The carpenters. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I 
also had an email that I forwarded to I'm you. I'm 100% going to have that song stuck in my head for the rest of the goddamn day. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're most welcome. This Yesterday was... Uh, oh, uh, Barbie Girl. One of the one of the bass playing YouTubers uh, did a really cool sounding version of Barbie Girl, and uh, yeah, literally all day. Black Race, who is a member, has a question. Cool. Have you ever used semi precious stone, i.e. onyx or malachite, for inlay material? Any drawbacks? Um, I, I have in very, very limited fashion, yes. Uh, no, not, not any major drawbacks, except it's just a more difficult material to work with. Um, cutting it, grinding it, and all of that jazz is is problem problematic and uh, long time ago uh, before I started doing videos and all that uh, I used cubic zirconias and things like that because those were cut and easy to mount side dots etc so yeah it's one of those things I have used a lot of reconstituted stone in the past there we go. A very, very pretty, perfectly flat, gorgeous, as totally as planned, um, back plate. We're good. Uh, four and a half hours in. I'm very dirty. So I'm going to... People want to know if you've turned your mic off. I have not, but something's happened, so I'll look into that. And Paul Cook says that Carpenter's song will be stuck in your head until someone mentions Baby Shark. That one. Who was that? Paul Cook. Paul Cook. Have we ever put Paul into timer? <laughs> no, but he's a moderator. <laughs> so he can put himself in the timer. Paul, can you <laughs> test and see whether you're able to? Can you test and see if you are able to put yourself in timer, please? I'm very interested to see if that's a possible. <laughs> if that's possible. What's it? Three minutes. Yeah. 300 seconds, seconds. No, that's that's far too horrible. No, stop it, don't do it. That's a lot of time not being able to comment. Um, okay, so I managed to impale myself on a on a splinter of ebony at some point. Uh, got that done, yay. Did you get it out? Uh, yeah, luckily it was one of those splinters where you go in and then straight out again, so, so it was fine. Um, this is relatively clean and good. I'm going to go and wash the ebony dust off my hands and grab another cup of tea. And uh, I will leave you I will leave you with the base because Talitha doesn't particularly want to be looked at. Ian M says I'll see your baby shark and raise you. What does the fox say? I don't want to end up putting everybody in time out. It's... Paul Needs says, no unable or other mode mods. What? Oh, he's, he's not allowed to. <laughs> okay. uh, that's good. Uh, I will be back shortly. Oh, yeah. My microphone ran out of... Uh... Terry Love, I tried to put myself in timeout last week. It didn't work. Paul Cook, <laughs> mods can't timeout mods, but channel owner probably can. Alright, uh, it was a joke more than anything else. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> Bjorn, why do baby sharks suddenly appear perfect? And you're right, Renee, Ben needs a bushy squirrel tailed boom mic. That would be fun.
the camera seeing? Ben's first workbench. Mark Jennings, if you really want to be putting time out, I can oblige. But yeah, try your best to annoy Ben. Maybe a few WhatsApps when he gets back. Oh, crazy frog, that's the worst. <laughs> Terry Love, yes, he's still using that workbench. I think, hold on, there's a date on the back of the photograph. 86. He was five years old. So Ben's five in that photo. And I think our dad probably built him that workbench. Jamie Crockcramer, yeah, that probably was a little bit more stable. <laughs> uh, it also would have been built in our garage, which had concrete floors and brick walls. Mark Jennings, don't tell Ben that I said you should do that, but yeah, have fun. Yes, that's the no neighbor mowing something and it's also just been raining so it might start up again. Greetings. Salutations. That's quite a cool photo actually. I think you were five or six in that photo. Yeah, that sounds about right. Your first workbench. Just before daddy left. People ask you if that bench is more stable than this one. <laughs> and Lisa, yeah, he didn't bring me any tea, but then I don't drink tea, so it doesn't matter. No, she absolutely doesn't. Though he did forget my water earlier. And mine. I also forgot mine. The tea was more important for you. Uh, yeah. No, that was about. Wow, oh, that was a record imp. That's a really cool little vice that uh, was put on there. The date on the back says 86. That was five. Cool. Um, so yeah. <sighs> I was going to make jokes about how stable the bench is versus, I don't know, my personality. <laughs> I think the bench wins. <laughs> That's the problem. That's why it's not a joke. <laughs> Paul Cook says fantastic reverb in the shed extension. I think they can hear the mowing amplified. Uh, yeah, would you mind shutting the door actually? So the, the, the neighbour has decided that uh, live stream day is definitely the day to do uh, any garden work. Uh, and he's mowing his lord and it's actually also raining and he's still... I don't know. It's one of those things. Anyhow, alrighty. Look, I'm really excited about this. 
Uh, we're coming to... We're coming to a... A conclusion. Of sorts. It's obviously not going to be finished today, but, you know, we never really expected that now, did we? Okay, the wipe on guitar finishing lacquer, which isn't a lacquer at all, Talitha, we need to change that label. We need to change the product name. It needs to be called wipe on guitar finishing varnish because lacquer is factually incorrect. I'm sure I put a note somewhere. I've just never gotten around to it because oh, somebody talk... keeps giving me other things to well, do. You know, it's just one of those things. There's a billion things to do. Now, the problem I've got with this is that it does not tint the instrument in the same way that the oil does. The oil builds up and gives it a beautiful um, browny, orangey, vibrant, woody kind of a feel, even if you've got a, a white base to start with. I would like, I would like to ask your permission to stain this guitar with the amber spirit based stain. Spirit water. I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think of that? Am I doing a poll? Yeah. Terry Love, I conclude that Ben isn't sure what to do next. <laughs> well, yeah, look, so the, the, issue, the issue as it currently stands is this guitar is full of holes. And guitar finishing oil, penetrating oil, all of that jazz, it goes into these holes and then 10, 20 minutes later, sometimes overnight, it, the oil spooges back out again. So on most open grain woods, not an issue. Oil it in the morning, watch it through the day, and you can see if there's stuff, because the, you have to wipe away the excess guitar finishing oil. You have to, otherwise you have to sand it back and basically start again. This guitar I can foresee would be a huge problem because of all of the holes that we have in here. It would, it would suck up the oil and then spooge it out while I'm asleep tonight. And I want that. You don't want that. We want something that will dry almost immediately and be good and done. Wipe on guitar finishing lacquer does that, but it doesn't give the look that I wanted. Therefore, I'm thinking an amber stain underneath an oil. And uh, here we go. That's exactly what I wanted to, to, to have to leave. It was a bit of a, a test. So, so yeah, always test things, specifically finishes. And if possible, get to the correct or, or, or close to the uh, the sanding that you've done everywhere else, if you can. It looks different on raw wood. Andre Silver says, just don't sleep tonight. I, I don't sleep anywhere, to be honest. Rocket Punk Art says, Ox Blood to Blood Orange to Amber Burst would look really cool. It would, but uh, in my opinion, those finishes work best when you've got... No, let me rephrase that. This is at heart a very simple instrument. It's a one-piece body, and I think having bursts would then mean I'd have to burst all the way around. It isn't like I've got a top and a back and I'm doing a burst or a fade or whatever it is on, a, on the front. It would go around the whole thing and it sort of would change the character, whereas with this I'm able to stain the entire body one colour and it will accentuate the flames and the figuring and the cool stuff. I'm just checking I'm not bleeding on it. And, um, 
yeah look cool Pete C says I used that amber on my last guitar and it's an awesome colour and Terry Love says ask Lisa it's her base yeah what does Lisa say <laughs> uh, super chat from the big unit Ben did you give any more thought to selling boxes of off cuts or 4x4 four four squares of figured maple veneer to practice with stunning stains uh, yes I like that idea <sighs> the, we don't have that many offcuts. We are not making so many guitars that that there is that much, or those that many usable offcuts available. Which means that very rapidly we would end up having to chop up good wood in order to make the st the, the squares, and that would just be a shame. Like. Enough to bring me to tears. Mm. <sighs> All right, so. Lisa Harshberger says, I like amber, I like dark too, but I need a lighter colored base. Oh, there we go. I've done a poll and it's 66% yes so far. Okay, well, let's see. And this is, this is straight, straight on the wood without messing with um, a dark substrate, etc. Fukumi, if Ben bleeds in the stain, he should just say it's a tribute to Steve Vai and be done with it. It was also allow me to build a Ben clone. Uh, if anybody gets to build a Ben clone, it would be me, and... Uh, I didn't think the world could deal with two of you. But imagine how many videos we would make. In 30-odd years. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> Creating clones is one thing. Uh, accelerated growth of said clones is a completely different thing. Uh, yeah. Okay, so... This is very fresh amber stain. I'm wondering what happens when you put the uh, the water-based rub-on varnish on pretty much straight away. I'm expecting some lifting, maybe. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't played with this finish as much as uh, I have others. Oh, look at that! So yeah, we're we're lifting. But yeah, that just makes it a bit more subtle. Lisa Harshberger says, as long as it's not last night's wine. <laughs> I was so tempted to use last night's wine. Last, yeah. yeah. Uh. Pete C, love at the grain really pops. Yeah, dark red base coat, then finished with amber. I don't want to resand the whole thing. I, we've done enough of that. So if I put a dark red base, I would then have to sand that back to give the amber something to. No, let's just go with a sing, single, uh, single coat of that, and then we can start applying uh, some some finish. Super chat from Terry Love. Ben clones would distract each other, and nothing would end up getting done. And Fukumi says, "Don't misunderstand me. I was thinking of making nine Ben clones so he can get a one-day build done in one day. My intentions are noble." <laughs> we would distract each other. Very much so. Yeah, baby. Rocket Punk Art, imagine having to film Ben both at HQ and in the shed at the same time. Hell. It'd be a nightmare. I have to. Alright. End All this clone, I mean, <laughs> poll. 67% yes. Yeah, of course. It's, it's the correct answer. It is absolutely the correct answer. Um, 
Yeah, nice. <laughs> Complimentary colour to the brass hardware. Gold hardware, but yeah. Mm. Oh. Well, I suppose that's what I was thinking. Baby shark. Uh, alrighty, so let's let us mask off the fretboard. Now this is not particularly good masking tape for this task, so I'm gonna have to burnish it down and even so some Some stain is going to get wicked up underneath, but uh, we are able to sand that off. This is just to stop the process a little bit. Super chat from Mark Jennings. Mark, it's been a while. Um, if Ben gets cloned, Ben too would have a chance to get better head tattoos. Oof. Right in my insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Ben was part of the drama club in high school. Never particularly good at drama. Far too self conscious at that point. Paul needs, hmm, Ben 10. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even. Got to think about watches, though. Rob King, have you guys cleaned the cameras since you installed them? I see lots of dust just dying to get into a lens. There is a hell of a lot of freaking dust on these cameras. Uh, I think yes. the lenses are already compromised. It just is what it is. Um, unfortunately, what can you do? Terry Love, <laughs> Mark Jennings, uh, Pen two may might even decide not to get head tattoos. I don't know. I don't know. So my one issue is that the, our biggest uh, market, the highest percentage of viewers, let's put it that way, is in the states, and apparently there's an association between head tattoos and. Uh, a particular type of person who holds views diametrically opposite to mine over there. In the UK, it's, you know, hell, I saw two people yesterday with head tats, which, when I got this done, was absolutely not the case. Um, you know, nowadays, yeah, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, uh, we know what we're doing. I'm going to set up... I'm going to set up so that I can do this properly. Andre Silver wants to know what you just used to blow dust off the lenses. Oh, um, this is a, a little... It's a, it's a camera... It's a camera fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a trade term, yeah, fluffy. Oh. I knew what they were called because I ordered like four for the cameras at HQ and they never uh, got used. Uh, probably because you kept them in a drawer somewhere. I didn't know they existed. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> That's because I was in charge of all the cameras. Huh. So you never used the things that you bought? I did when I needed to. And then I left. I started working from any. It doesn't matter. <sighs> Cheers, yo. Lisa Harshberger says it was a thumbnail of Ben and me wondering about the head tattoo that started me watching the channel. I, I had several reasons to get the tattoos. Uh, you now all know that I have face blindness, I think. I, I do not, I can't even picture Talitha's face when she's not in the room with me. I have a vague idea of what it is, but that's 
you know, until she's here, I'm like, oh, that's what she looks like. You know, it, it's a literal, seriously. Um, so I don't recognize people. I don't. It's a, it's a, an, until I've known somebody for a long time, it's a huge issue. Um, and I just thought that was just normal. And I'm like, oh, nobody's ever going to recognize me. I want to be famous or infamous. And uh, whether that was a good idea or not, I, I don't know. But uh, I wanted to be recognizable and I thought, okay, fine. Yeah, tattoos, let's do that. I also wanted to not have a normal job. Um, this was in 2008 where I'd just gone, been made back, well, made myself bankrupt because of the crash and losing customers and due to the, the global recession and all that jazz back then. And I didn't, I wanted to force myself to make this work. And back then getting a normal job with head tattoos was basically not going to happen. And then finally, I'd just had Jasmine. And uh, I thought, hmm, I could scare some boyfriends. And what does so, Jasmine think of this plan? She laughs. Uh, she's currently not interested in anybody, so <laughs> yeah. I walked past her room just now. <laughs> she's she's um, she's not streaming at the moment, but she's she's playing online with her friends, and she she's just shouting at somebody online, and then giggling. It was you know, but uh, I didn't know what that. It's like earthquake, shit, invasion. <laughs> uh, no, it's just Jasmine playing computer games. It's fine. We're all right. Okay, that's it. I've drunk the tea. We can start this process. Uh, yeah. I have a quick question from Rocket, Rocket Punk Art. Hmm, but will the answer be quick? Probably not. I have some stainless steel fret wire, but no fret press. Do you think I could use a radius block for fretting? Or can I borrow a button harbor press with actual inserts? Just use a hammer. On the stainless steel. Okay. Stainless steel is like tone wood. It doesn't exist. <laughs> it's no, no, it, it, it is harder than most frets. Yes. It is harder than cheap frets emphatically, but as a how much as a percentage of how much harder it is than a good quality nickel silver fret, there's not that much in it. Um, it's not like you are installing diamond frets, although that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's it's um, it, every single one of the tools that I use for, for installing frets is entirely and utterly interchangeable. Um, I kind of want to stain this ebony fretboard with the amber just to see what it would look like. Test piece. Where's the bit you cut off the... <laughs> Did I get distracted? <laughs> of course, squirrel. Did you just call me squirrel? Squirrel. It's mm -hmm. Mr. Squirrel. No, forget the amber. Keith Barnhart says he said the word get the pitchforks. What word? <laughs> <laughs> See, the problem is if I stay in especially a fretless fretboard, it'll look cool, but Tonewood. it'll wear. <laughs> Tonewood. Yeah, it'll wear out too soon, so bad idea. But. Anyway. Lisa Harshberger, okay, he can do that. I give him permission to stay in the breadboard. Yeah, I don't think it would last long enough, I'm afraid. It would, uh, I mean, hell, we could actually ship the guitar, ship the bass with a bottle of stain. It's a refresh. It's easy it? enough, yeah. <laughs> Rich. Leafly. 
really misheard that. Sounded like you said you wanted to stain the fretboard with the anguish. <laughs> yeah, when the cameras turn off, that's when the anguish begins. <laughs> you have no idea. Oh, Talitha. Okay. Fine. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, I've just found my first area where the sanding wasn't quite perfect. So there's going to have to be a little bit of touch up. That's the one problem with putting stain on. It highlights your inadequacies. This wood is just eating the paper. Who else noticed my mistake? Well, Mark Jennings uh, says stain doesn't highlight Ben's inadequacies. Terry and I do that job for them. <laughs> Bam! <Bandon. laughs> Spike Friggle Fixer Shop says that pops. <coughs> it does pop. Rob King says it looks bloody lovely, but I just can't help thinking it would look better in blood red. Everything looks better in blood red. Uh, yes, no, I agree, but... But amber is closer to what I was hoping the guitar would look like um, when I first conceived of it. Okay. Alrighty, so the mistake I made is I uh, spent the time masking around the fretboard completely forgetting that I'm staining the entire body and I haven't masked around. Holy crap, that looks good on camera. Um, the join of the neck, because I don't want to stain the sapili neck at all. So. <sighs> so here we go. I've also found a few areas where I need to go back and do some sanding. Um, there's a yeah, there's a scratch mark there, and it's it's fully expected and not a problem. Comments. Paul Needs says, "Which mistake? Seriously, that looks like wood now." <laughs> and. Ben Tyerman says in three comments, it's more figured than expected. Figures. Go figure. <laughs> Wait till you see the back. Yeah, for some reason, the back is very nicely flamed. 
Mesh Black 23 says, I have to mute this part because paper towel on wood is like nails on a chalkboard for me. So sorry. No, I fully understand. I would be the same. And Lisa Harshberger says, I honestly did not think this base could look prettier than it already did. Thank you. We'll start here and then we'll just see where we end up. I might need a Sandy Drozdick has a question. Hi, what's up? My kit base has a bolt on neck. The mm -hmm. neck pocket is one to two millimeters larger than the neck, so it wobbles yep. around a bit. Yep. Should I try to make the fit tighter or yes. will the screws hold it in place? Uh no, you need to make it tighter. Uh, this is this is the problem with substandard kits. You end up spending more time uh, fixing them than is ideal. There we go. That's a nice way of saying that. Uh, yeah, if you've got something that's one or two millimeters too big, you will never have an instrument that stays in tune or stays aligned. Uh, no matter how hard you tighten those uh, screws up, uh, it, it's simply not good enough. Um, so yeah, basically some veneers inside the inside the neck cavity to yeah. help that, and then check the line, check the alignment as you're going, because that might well be off as well. And while you're about it, measure the neck. If the pocket is that bad, look for other problems. Look for problems with the scale length. Look for problems with the uh, bridge placement in comparison to scale length and all that because when you've got a big problem like that chances are you're gonna have some other ones that are not quite so obvious sadly this is one of the reasons why we started making kit guitars um, and basses is because there's just so many issues like this around okay so Carl Peterson says, has the raffle for the space started? Not seeing a link for it in the notes. If not, when is it likely to be raffled? Okay, uh, so let us just talk through this, Talitha, quickly. Talitha doesn't want to talk about this. I don't think making plans for you in the beginning of the week, because by Thursday they've changed. Well, this is the thing. We've, got, we've currently got two two projects that we can put them on the, on the other hands, it doesn't matter. We've got two projects currently moving, going on that could be edited. Is Bear currently working on, on the baritone? I sent this morning the unboxing for a midweek video. Unboxing? That's not on the main channel, that's on extras. Yeah, but I sent it to him today, and the... Tish. Yes, he has... You were going to send him the third part of the Ukraine. He has the first two live streams of the Ukraine build. Okay, look, tell you what. Let us do a poll. Would you guys rather... Uh, see Super Edits and not super edits, see uh, edits of this base build on the main channel before you see edits of the baritone Ukraine guitar uh, on the main channel. Basically those two projects are the, the next projects that will be going, will be being edited while we figure out what's happening with the hand tool build and, and what's happening moving forward. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 up to you. Um, when when the base does go live, and the thing is, I haven't actually finished the Ukraine build, uh, so it's probably better to have the base go live as the first. <laughs> this wood just eats tissue. Crikey! Uh, yeah, it's probably better that we do the base, but uh, we'll see. What do you think? I think she's beautiful. <laughs> Tight 
Tahoe Mike's is summer reruns. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You guys, you guys are all watching the process already. Are you spoiling the fun, Talitha, by opening windows and things? Spoiling the fun? I need to breathe. This is the... No, you're just weak. I must be. The big unit has a question about staining. Alrighty. Can you use a sponge to apply stain if the paper towel won't hold together? Um, I don't know. Essentially, this... The issue is that it's a single-use thing. I, I like using tissue because it's, it's inexpensive and it's... It doesn't get... It, well, I, I prefer using tissue because you're not using cloths or sponges or something that uh, that is more... Has, a, has more of an impact on the environment long term. Uh, so a sponge, you use it for your stain once, or a cotton cloth, you use it for your stain once and then you're done. I'm using, on a whole guitar, maybe three pieces of, of tissue to, to, to stain it. I think... Uh, I'd rather I'd rather use more tissue than uh, throw away a sort of plastic-based sponge thing, really. Look at this figuring. says I am so on edge with that open bottle and the base wobbling around. Yep. Uh, yes, that is a problem. Fukumi says there are foams intended for spreading stains. They look like brushes. You use something similar to spread the wipe on lacquer on. Yes. The... Yeah. No. I, I, I've I've got them here, but again, it's a it's a single use thing, uh, specifically with the uh, specifically with the spirit based stain. I'm fairly sure that we would um, melt those, mm. which would be less than ideal. Look at this flaming. Question from Anthony Cunliff. Yeah. Ben, do you think you could ever go back to just building guitars with no commentary or cameras? Is using the cameras and such too large a part of your build process now? Hmm.
ta-da. Okay, it's not perfect. Uh, I could... I could now, if I decided to, essentially stop doing this. I could probably just say to the guys at Crimson, okay, fine, here you go. Um, pay me a, a, a sort of a normal person's yearly wage and uh, I promise not to come in and mess with your schedules or anything. <laughs> Um, which, you know, might be tempting to some people. And, and yeah, I could potentially do that and then just spend, you know, retire. Horrific. Um, you know, crimson, the tools and the stains and, 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 and all of that and the school would probably sustain uh, a, a relatively um, enough of a salary to sort of keep me and and the kids fed, etc. And I could retire, and, and and it would be fine. But it sounds to me like hell, horrifically. Um, I think that. Could you rephrase, to tell me the question again, Talitha, exactly? Would it be, would, would losing the cameras... Is it, is having the cameras too much of your process? Okay, that, that, that's not the way of saying it. Having the cameras is not part of my process. Having the cameras is the only thing that keeps me sane. Having the, having the mini deadlines of having to create a video and the dopamine rush of actually finishing something and doing something. A guitar build might take 20 videos, but that's 20 completed projects within that video that keeps me, as somebody with ADHD, requiring that dopamine rush to just f have the um, get up and go to get up and get moving. Uh, you know, that sounded better in my head. Uh, so no, it's, it's not just part of the process, it is the process, it is who I am and what I am now. Um, could I go back to just having a normal job building guitars? No. Uh, no. I absolutely don't think I could. I, I love making, I love creating. Um, at this point, if I had to, if YouTube went, uh, went away and I didn't have the option to redo, to you know, start again on a different platform or something, I probably, I might not even build guitars. I would probably, in my retirement, start a tool making company making high-end planes or something, uh, where you get the project, but it's, it's, you can finish something in a couple of days, <laughs> which is tempting. But so, so no, for me, the product is the video as much as the guitar is the product, which is why, you know, why raffling them off is also part of the thing. Most of the bills are are not to order, and uh, I've already made the video, which is the product, and yeah, we good. I don't know. Difficult. So Daniel Marquez sent this to show. You're getting closer and closer to doing an oh actual my capybara. Damn it! I like it. <laughs> Camera. It's the main camera at the moment. Yeah, the finish, the colour is actually pretty, Oops. pretty spot on. Okay, now everybody can see. That's not in focus. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. They can see the colour. It's fine. Okay, nice one. Um, I want to stain the inside, so I'm just going to use a use a paintbrush. Super chat from Michael. Barrett. Michael, hi. 
He says, hi Ben, I'm coming for two weeks in June. You have fantastic toast. I'm planning on building an Ibanez Iceman. <laughs> you have fantastic toast. I would like to use a unique piece of wood like your six hour build to make it my ah. own. What would you recommend? Six hour build, six hour build. That wasn't the nine hour build, that was the six hour build. Sheesh. Talitha, could you find what I... Find an image of that? I. That was a long time ago. Lots of people I vaguely comments. recall it being similar to what I'm working on now, actually. A very sort of uh, gnarly, um, raw series level chunk of wood. Sorry, what are, what are people suggesting? No, lots of people in the comments um, complimenting Lisa Harshberg on how nice her base looks. <laughs> Yeah, that's the six hour. Okay, yeah. It's not too... That's a really nice shape. I've been doing this... <laughs> Sorry. I... It's a fairly similar lower horn to this one. Can you remember what the wood is? It is heat shocked elm, I think. So not the same as horrifying. No, so all of those cracks in that were because it was some somebody shoved it in a in a, a wood drying kiln at too high of a temperature too rapidly, or maybe it was left uh, maybe it was left in the sun, but essentially the wood dried really quickly, all the moisture left, and it cracked the wood in lots of tiny little cracks. So that was an accidental thing, not intentional to get that look. Oh, correct, one hundred percent. Yeah, no, that was not, that was not on purpose. So, what wood would you recommend for Michael to look at? Well, he just needs to, um, just. It's really difficult finding wood like that, uh, because most of it gets burnt, most of it goes to goes to the fire. Would there be anything interesting in our own wood stores? We can we can look for sure. Uh, yeah, the best bet is send Ricky a send Ricky a message, and uh, we will see what we've got. I do have a piece of wood. Uh, well, I've got another piece from this base here, which could potentially. No, it's not big enough. That's your other issue. The Iceman is a is a huge guitar, uh, so it might not actually be feasible uh, because it's a non traditional material. Uh, it's not necessarily available. Uh, now I need to go and visit, there's a couple of wood suppliers that I want to go and visit in the not too distant future. And uh, if I've got the dimensions and all of that uh, to hand, then we'll keep, we'll keep an eye out for you, basically. Going to the roadie, all capitals. Wait a minute, are we talking about guitars being has built in a day? <laughs> I so nearly knocked that stain over. <laughs> Fake strop and luthier stain everywhere. Lids on now. Okay. All right, so what I have got is that's not that's not bad. Anonymous, anonymous botch says, "Won't the inside of the cavities been done with shielding paint?" Uh, not the pickup cavities, no. Uh, in fact, while I'm about it, I'll do the just the inside. I'm ending this poll. Oh yeah, what's the poll say? What was it about, even? 
Which series do I have next? Oh, okay, go for it. 64% baritone. All right, yeah. They're just saying that so that I finish the baritone next. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I agree, it's, it's uh, something that needs to be done and we've got most of the footage um, already. Anonymous botches asking if you stained the inside lip. The inside what of the what? Inside lip of the cavity. Um, Talitha's not actually watching live. She's uh, talking from the past. Mm. No, you, you're reading. Uh, that's literally what I've just been doing. Toby D says, I'm going to do a brown burst on a 330 build. Definitely going to include that amber in it. Looks like a great colour. It is one of my favourite colours of all time. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for agreeing. Okay. Ooh, interesting question from Paul um, Brewster. Okay. Paul, hi. How would you finish a light wood to make it as white as possible? <sighs> B stuff. Uh, oxalic acid. I would get some oxalic acid from a beekeeping supplies store and use that to bleach the wood. Or you could, if you wanted to use bleach, just use bleach uh, or peroxide, something like that. Uh, and then you bleach it. And finish wise, I would use what I am planning on using on this guitar, which is the wipe on guitar finishing lacquer, which does not color the wood in any in any way. So uh, you take the wood, you make it even whiter, and then you use a non-coloring, non-yellowing finish like this, and you'll end up with something uh, like that. I can't believe, I mean, you guys need to give me a round of applause for remembering the words oxalic acid, because I completely have blanked on those. Ah. Did Lena just clap, clap and say boo? Woo-hoo. Woo, -hoo. woo. Okay, I thought you were booing me with a smile on your face. Um, yeah, anyway. I think that's a little bit good, don't you? Anyway. Where I sit is... Poor me. Did you see that? <laughs> so they really do go right the way through the body. <laughs> I hope the right camera caught that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it does. Shouldn't you have got rid of all the dust before you stained? I did. I brushed it down. This is Tastes like ash. Um, okay, actually, honestly, this is this is so so close. The back is the back is pretty good. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm one hundred percent gonna have to. Lorenzo says, says instant meme. Bravo, Ben. <laughs> Lol. We're all on the floor laughing. That was, uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, Lisa Harshberger says, it's going to be so very hard to congratulate the winner of this if it's not me, <laughs> so what would it take to rig? Uh, what's this? <laughs> You're having fun. Uh, okay, I, I am having fun. I really am having fun. Uh, 
partially because so much of the sanding has actually been has worked out. So I've got a I've got a little uh, I've got some scratches there from the rasp that I've that I've missed out. So I need to get rid of that and restain that area, and I need to tidy up around the neck a little bit. But in general, we're pretty good. I just pointed that to you, and you weren't even looking. How very dare you! It's almost like I'm in control of the cameras. Paul Need says, you've mentally acquired the colour I was going to do on my ash maple body GTBO build. Have stains here. The only good thing is that I now know I don't need to use a brown pre-stain to lift the figure. That is... Yeah, that's the thing. So you go, you can see, you can see the scratches there now that I need to get rid of. So in all seriousness, I have not ever done, at least in living memory, a, a stain where I've just used the stain and I've gone straight on uh, up until the uh, Boba Fred guitar, where I used the, uh, the red the vibrant oxblood and it was a shift change in my mind and I realized that uh, there is no it's not absolutely essential to, to use a dark thing to raise a grain and then you know you can go straight with the um, with the color that you want and get a really really cool effect and it, it's a, yeah for the longest time I thought you needed to um, so there we go. So I've got a little bit of tidying up to do and there's going to be a little bit of restaining. I didn't hit this bevel properly, I don't think. I've got a couple of questions and a comment from Borgonian Evolution. Hi. This is okay, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen in a guitar building yet. <laughs> Uh, so, standing questions from Matt Charman. Hey. It says, hello, I bought the stain shots. Sorry for yep. being thick, but what ratio is a good starting point to dilute? And I'm assuming distilled water. Uh, no, it doesn't have to be distilled water. Um, that doesn't really affect things uh, in any meaningful way. Um, Roughly one to twenty, so one drop to twenty drops of water. But Talitha, is there not instructions that are supposed to go with the shots? Um, Try to read that one, but it's covered in shots. So. There's never been instructions like that. <coughs> you've said in the Whoops. past to Lisa Harshberger one to twelve drops of water. So now you've said one to twenty. So no, I've never said one to twelve. You did in the last time you stayed. You're misremembering. Twenty and twelve sound very similar. Lisa and I are not misremembering. Huh. Dilute with water for a range of colour intensity. Test on scrap wood before application. We do not recommend using this product undiluted. We do not. We also do not consume it. Do 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 do. Wearing gloves are recommended. Yeah. Uh, somewhere between 1 in 15 and 1 in 20 or so is around about right. Uh, it does depend on the colour you're after. It does depend on the intensity you're after. And uh, yeah, but uh, you will get, for a 10 mil shot, you should get um, 150 to 200 mil in the end. <laughs> yeah, or more. Okay. The next question on staining yeah. is from Stefan Abuzade. 
I bought a few of your stains. I'm curious, what is the optimal temperature for applying the stains? Huh. Unsure if we can only use them certain months because of being in a no heat garage. Okay. Uh, I'm spending this entire episode just blowing gently, in, well, not so gently in your ears, people. I apologize. Stain you can apply pretty much whenever the temperature makes no major difference to it. Uh, if you have, uh, yeah, if you are worried about it and the wood is particularly cold, then keep the guitar in the house for, say, a day where you are, take it out to the workshop, apply stain, let it off gas for a bit, then take it back into the house, and you'll be fine. Now, temperature with regards to guitar finishing oil is an issue, but it's actually not as bad of an issue as, you th as, as it could be. So when it's particularly cold, guitar finishing oil will not want to uh, start curing, really. Uh, so uh, in, in, in warm weather, you apply the guitar finishing oil, you cover the whole guitar, you penetrate, and then when it starts pooling on the top of the guitar, uh, you leave it for 10 or 15 minutes, and it starts to, to sort of gel. That's the word I'm looking for. It starts to gel. I've been, I've, I, I need to put that in the instructions. That's how you're supposed to say it. Um, when it starts to gel, you wipe away all of the excess. If it's cold, it's not gonna start to gel. You can leave it for an hour and then wipe off all of the excess and take it into somewhere warm and it'll dry as normal. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing to stop you from uh, from using stain uh, when it's cold. JS Trucking Guitars is on my side and Lisa's side. He says, you did say 112 last time then. You're gaslighting me. Michael Barrett says, instructions unclear, I now have a green face. I assume you consumed. <laughs> the big units don't consume. You just want to suck all the fun out of everything, lol. <sighs> Mr. Waffles, does it mix well with Dorbin? Last time I tried, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm using the stain to just see if there's any egregious issues or areas that I need to re-sand. And there's no... no major problems here. Matt Charman has said, I've been watching Ben's videos for years, but this is the first live chat I've caught, and Ben is already blowing in my ear. <laughs> well, you know, come to the live streams, I will show my appreciation. And, and welcome. <laughs> hey, Adam, to remember, says to Matt, hey. you get used to it. He doesn't even offer to take us out for dinner first. <laughs> well, you know. Um, so the issue was here, I, I hadn't sanded enough to get uh, some of the glue off, which is a problem, mainly because I couldn't really see the glue because I wiped most of the, the, the excess off with a damp cloth. So you need to go in there and clean that up. a super chat from David King. David. He says, how would you cope with a guide dog? As I would like to build a guitar on one of your courses, it's something I need to do on my bucket list. Um, as long as a dog, uh, 
I wanted to make a, a really poor taste joke about dogs and buckets and whatever. We've got a giant bucket of water outside because it's quite hot at the moment and we've got water dogs and they spend a lot of time in the bucket, but I'm just not clever enough to come up with something that's funny. Um, we have dogs visit every now and then and specifically a guide dog uh, that is obviously well trained, uh, no problems whatsoever. Um, I, yeah book a course in the normal way and just say, hey, by the way, I'm coming with a guide dog. Uh, the only issues might be in the machine room. There would have to be human supervision in the machine shop. We, we don't have many robots to help supervise in any case. Um, yeah. Uh, we. Uh, it depends on... Yeah, essentially no problems. I don't think that there's any, any issues whatsoever. Uh, drop us an email to office at crimsonguitars.com for the attention of Ricky and just say, I've spoken to Ben on the live stream. Uh, here's the situation and flesh it out a little bit more for us. But uh, it should be absolutely fine and I would love to, uh, love to meet you. Yeah, we'd make any arrangements necessary to make it work for you to experience the course. Yeah, no, we are... Um, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all good. And here I am doing more sanding. Okay. Uh, Jay is tracking, very good point, all in capital letters. Just make sure no other students at that time are allergic to dogs. That did cross my mind, but I don't think... Um, the student room is fairly... Yeah. Spread out, so we would make arrangements. Um, the only possible issue would be maybe someone who doesn't is afraid of dogs or has issues, but I think that's less common than. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, th I think there is no problem that is insurmountable, and that certainly is uh, a very surmountable. Uh, thing. All right, keep the questions coming. I seem to have resumed sanding. I apologise. Of course. Uh, so that question earlier about if it mixes well with bourbon, <laughs> Beth McKellar responded to say, nope, Coca-Cola mixes better. Yeah. <sighs> I really fancy uh, a good bourbon and coke at the moment, and uh, that's not a good idea. I haven't actually had, I haven't had bourbon and coke in about 10 or 12 years now. I thought you were going to say 10 or 12 days. Ah, no. Nope, longer than that. The closer I look, the, the, the more issues I'm seeing that aren't real issues and they're things that most people wouldn't ever see. This is the problem. It is a, uh, it's a minefield that you can get into. But essentially I'm lightly sanding down, fixing a little bit, and uh, then we'll restain with a fairly light application of stone and it'll look oh. great. David King, you asked about the guide dog, says yeah. thank you. I'm a trained press toolmaker by trade. I said repeat, a trained what toolmaker? Trained press toolmaker, which means workshop experience yeah. it won't be an issue. Super cool. Uh, I, I think that and this is not me blowing smoke up the ass of a potential customer. I think that tool makers are some of the most talented humans on the planet. Um, like, just incredibly cool. Um, such a wide range of skills required to, to do. So, oh, there's a scratch there. Underneath the bridge, isn't there? Yeah. So, yeah, guitar building should not be an issue for you. And we're all about helping people fulfill their bucket, bucket list. Mm. 
For some reason that brings me back to Fight Club. <laughs> um, sorry, carry on. King Bob's Guitar Works. Can this amber... No, 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 hold on. That, that, that name required some appreciation, carry on. Oh, and it's Works spelled W-E-R-K-S, Works. Okay. Can this amber be covered in flash coat or suitcase clear? Both, yes. Both, either or. Yes, all of our stains are compatible, no problems whatsoever. Uh, Terry Love, comment, ow, 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 my neck hurts, my brain crashed, I dozed off in my chair, too much handmade chocolate Easter egg, I think. Oh my god. Who gets handmade chocolate eat? Ah! Oh. You might have handmade them as well. Then he sent a super chat to say, I missed the staining process. Oh well, the body looks so good with that colour. Wait, Terry. Where are we? I suppose the main one. That's cool. If you missed the staining process. Oh, Terry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the sad things? Mm, oh, I got it. Terry, uh, so, your little stunt. <laughs> Terry Love says toolmakers know 101 ways to do things and then find 102 to 1001. Yeah, I absolutely agree. All right, well. Uh, there we go. Almost. Matt Lang says, if 10 mil shots come ready mixed in 150 ml bottles, surely that's a ratio of 1 to 14. No, they don't. Uh, there's different ratios per stain, uh, depending on the colour. So that's that's the thing. I mean, Talitha, if you please send Sam a, a message, tell him that we need to create a cheat sheet so people can know how to mix our stains from the uh, the relevant shots basically and while you're about it tell them that I would like to develop a blacker black stain <laughs> yes I was very careful when I said that Right, Bob, I'm going in. I think I'm tired, people. It's been many hours since my last coffee. three looking at and why. There you are, three. Good. I probably don't need to shake it again quite so soon, but hey. An old friend of mine is a chocolatier. I blame her for sending me the eggs filled with gooey truffle filling. Oh, that's even better. Problem is, you need old friends in order to uh, mm. reach that achievement, don't you? I'd settle for friends.
The trick is to not leave any hard lines. If you uh, if you do, you immediately need to wipe them away with a clean with a clean towel. Now it's going to be a lot less obvious on this particular piece of wood, but uh, yeah, with a, a more traditional uh, flame maple or something like that, you want to. You want to stain with the uh, with the grain and be very very careful to blend it all in. Look at me. Says, please leave a dip in a coffee. I finished work, but now I need to do the dishes, so I need my audio book. <laughs> well, we'll see where we we'll see where we sit. Um, I've just found the other, there's a scratch there, I'm not sure if you can see it, that I missed. And this is why, I mean this is technically in the last 5% of the work, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the final finish. Etc. But it, it takes so much time to do the preparation and the staining and the finishing and all that, and it is so important to do correctly. Questions? Big unit turned super chat to say, didn't crimson make of to say, didn't crimson make of white stain at one point? Yes, yeah, we did. It's uh, we discontinued it because there was so much pigment in it that essentially it was almost a paint, really. And uh, when they sediment issues, and that was it, it had so much pigment that. Uh, that it's settled and you needed to uh, really mix it. Now, I would reconsider, I would consider re relaunching that, but uh, we would put ball bearings in the, yeah, we would have to put ball bearings in the, in the bottle so that, uh, it got mixed properly. I think that would solve the problem. How long, if someone bought a stain and then didn't use it, and it sat in a workshop, how long did it last? And same question for the oils. Uh, oils, I'm not entirely sure, but there is a shelf life. Uh, it's in the order of uh, a year or two, uh, if not longer. Uh, but uh, and I can't be particularly specific about that because it does depend on the temperature at which it is stored. Uh, stains, um, stains do not cure. Stains potentially could off gas. Uh, and uh, so, for example, the spirit-based stains, you could uh, you could lose a lot of the spirit if if the lid's not on properly or something like that. Potentially, um, with water-based stains, for example, if you leave it for long enough, all the water will evaporate. But all you need to do is fill it up with water again, and, and you'll be fine. So, um, I have never experienced an issue. There's one issue, the purple water-based stain after about three or maybe four years starts to smell like ass. I kid you not. What is it with purple stain, purple heart? I think it's in the word purple. Oh, 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, that was a little bit much, wasn't it? No, uh, the perp, literally, I had one of the old, 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 old first batches of stains. And uh, it was this, um, this shape bottle from I, that when looks we. Looks like purple, don't open it. No, no, this is fallow blue. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, the purple. Oh. Perfectly fine. So, I mean, when did we start doing stains, Lee? There must be seven or eight years ago now. Probably more. This is perfectly fine. I haven't been working for you that long, so I You have 100% been working with us that long. Seven years, maybe. But we haven't been doing stain, maybe five. I asked for the new Vibrant stains. I started, I asked for those to be developed at least four years ago. long time the stains last that's fine you're good i spotted another bit where there's some uh, some issues to, to fix but we're getting there i have another question it's incessant i know that no i love um, it i wouldn't do it if i didn't love it mom got an email i can't remember who it was from and i can't remember you mean dale yes dale got an email so an order must have been delivered to a person in the height of winter and their stains were left outside and froze. Oi. That was we, so close to me saying we eh? <laughs> I don't know if we ever got any feedback because we asked the customer to let us know once they defrosted what the issue was. We were concerned about the bottle um, cracking or... Anyway. The, the plastic bottles, uh, I would be worried about the bottles yeah, about it expanding and breaking the bottle and, and that being an issue. But do you think if the stain itself, if it thawed, no problem? No problems whatsoever. Okay. Yes, no, mix it perfect. Mix it, mix it, and you'll be fine. All right, so there's some uh, some glue debris around the uh, the bottom of this uh, um, neck heel that's an issue. This is the sort of stuff that you don't see in, in guitar building videos, generally, uh, because you, you don't generally spend a lot of time filming it but it happens on every single guitar that's made by a quality uh, a quality company in my opinion Terry Love has a question Terry Love can ask any question he wants awesome. does a guitar stain with that purple stain start to smell like ass after a few years. <laughs> no, once it's applied, it's uh, it's fine. I, I don't know what it is. Um, and surely once, a few years down the line, it will have been sealed in oil or under a spray finish or exactly, something? Exactly, yeah. No, no, I think it's absolutely fine. It's uh, When I mentioned that to, I think it was Sam, he actually said that um, you don't even have to necessarily wait for a few years the the concentrate for that purple in particular it just has a, a, not a very pleasant smell it just uh, um, exaggerated with time shall we say and how are you going to get the stained fingerprints off the speedy there's no stained fingerprints on the speedy sure yeah your right hand was kind of the at one point. Now you switched gloves. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's a little bit burnished where I've been holding it, but it's fine. Okay. As long as you're sure. <sighs> I am sure that there are no issues under the sun that cannot be fixed. Good. Sometimes it involves fire. <laughs> Jamie Crockcrema wants to know wait. The, uh, the purple stain doesn't smell like grapes? Oh my god. We should 100% start adding scent into our stains just to confuse people. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be so cool. Now at that point you probably would end up with, with uh, stains that go off over time or... or or whatever, but uh, 
Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, that's great. <laughs> Corwin Whitehorn. Can Who, sorry? Corwin Whitehorn. Okay, hi. Can you stain a guitar with wine? <laughs> That's very funny because last night's live stream, I had a, uh, I had a glass of very cheap, very, very nasty sh sort of Cabernet Raz or whatever it was. Not nice. Um, and I didn't finish it. And the first, I, after the stream, I was standing here looking at the base wondering, hmm, could I use the uh, rest of this wine to stay in this base. And uh, then one of the first comments this morning was, was it Lisa? I think Lisa said, oh, why did you use that wine from last night to stay in this base? And then here you are completely unrelated without even being at the stream last night, wondering the exact same question. It's the, uh, it's the zeitgeist of the day. Yes, if you have nasty red wine, I'm absolutely sure that you could use it to stay in a guitar. And have you used coffee before? And definitely a student saying how to talk coffee. Uh, I've never used coffee pati particularly. Uh, but yes, it is something that can be done. It's not as, uh, it's not as vibrant uh, in general, but uh, it's absolutely... Damn it, everywhere I look, it's just a little bit more work to do. Uh, people are running with your let's scent the stains idea. Okay, go for it. Suggestions of uh, scent them, but use the wrong scents. Like the purple is oh, definitely not great. Oh, pongy purple. <laughs> um, no, not, not bad smelling, but no. it's like green you tend to associate with apple, but let's make the amber apple. Uh, amber apple, green would be uh, gooseberries, gooseberries, great. Ginger. Oh, ginger, I like it. Um, and then Black Wraith said you could develop a range of scratch and sniff guitars with the scented <laughs> stains. I think that could be cool. Now the issue is the the spirit stains are very, uh, they've got their own thing going on in any case. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the big unit has uh, gone even further. If you're going to add stained scents, be original. Make blue smell like oranges, green smell like oranges, yellow like grapes, red like bananas, purple like apples, orange like cherries. Yep. And there's a company that... Uh, sells a product called Liquid Ass, which, uh, yeah, they well, use our purple stain to, to create. There were questions, I I think it was J.S. Trucking probably, as to what an old brown stain would smell like. Um, so they used to use, they used to grind up mummies to make, um, Paint pigment. Yeah, pigment. Literally called mummy called brown. Called mummy brown, yes. So, there. Did you know when, when some artists found this out, they burnt or buried their pigments because they disagreed with this practice and they thought mummies should be laid to rest properly? I did not know that. Did they burn or... Uh buried their paintings that they'd used with the paint beforehand, I think not. Possibly, depending on if they were professional artists or amateurs. Okay, so here we have the stain having been applied and I've rubbed off 
the excess. And I don't know about you, but I'm quite happy with that. Rubbed off the excess, you just, just burnish it a little bit. Anthony Cunliffe says, just please don't come up with some kind of morning wood stain. I'll get my coat. Yes. Uh, I would like to do uh, a series of more natural. We've, we've just come out with the vibrant stains and we've got um, the pastel shades and all that. I would like now to do a, a set of more traditional, traditional wood colors. What, like mahogany, hazelnut, yeah. walnut? Hazelnut, what hazelnut look like? But yes, yeah, exactly that. Love says that is so pretty now. Thank you. And yet Lisa says at the mo I think I preferred it au natural. Well, you know, you have to uh, you have to start preparing yourself to not win it. So yeah, talk yourself into hating it. It's it's the healthy way to do it. <sighs> okay. Well, we're winding down. We've been going for six hours. I'm going to do a quick uh, rundown and then we'll apply some, some varnish. Uh, we stop the stream at six o'clock uh, as a sort of a hard thing, but uh, I think we're going to uh, probably stop a little bit earlier than that this evening. We shall see what happens. At this stage, we've been going for six hours on day three. It was seven hours on day one, six hours on day two, six, 12, 24, 25, no, 18, 19, 19 hours so far into this build. And at this stage, at this stage, the base has been stained. It is ready for finish. The neck is shaped and sorted. I've got a little bit of sanding with some of the stain, obviously, Stained the mahogany. It's appealing. Uh, the sanding is never, never over until the fat lady sings. Should we call it the fat lady bass? That's actually quite a good name for a bass, isn't it? But she's not fat. Neither are 90% of the women who say, do I look fat in this? Yeah. Um, can you do a recap of the freight situation? There is no freight situation. I know. Anthony Cunliffe says, I've missed a few things with regards to the freight situation. What's the deal, please? It looks freightless, but filled, question mark. Okay, it's freightless, but filled. With... Exclamation point. Uh, glow in the dark, filler powder in the fret slots. Uh, the, uh, the, the voting public voted and decided to do that. We've got side dots that are made out of brass with glow in the dark powder installed as well. Uh, I've carved a logo in the headstock, which uh, is hopefully under finish going to become a little bit more apparent. And in the end, this is looking at me weirdly, I don't know what's happening. Uh, in the end, if that's not the case, then we're going to use a pen, a fine line pen, just to pick it out and that'll be quite cool. Uh, but we really are well on the way to a completed instrument. What? I see the capybara now. Oh, do you? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, I'm never going to not be able to see the capybara now. Animate, uh, uh, Photoshop it for me so that I can see it too. Okay. Or do I not want that? Um, hold it up so I can see the back properly. The other way around. As if you're a left hand player. There we go. I see it. You see it? Mm -hmm. And then you, it looks like a pregnant capybara. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Questions, comments? Ready Maker One says the kids are saying. Oh my god, that's a cool name! God damn it! 
All these people with imagination. I've said that. All these people <laughs> with imagination coming up with the coolest names, and I can't even name a goddamn company. Gosh darn. Thank you. Anyway, he did it again. He says the kids are saying thick now, Ben. <sighs> Until the thick lady sings. I don't know. I will never be. I, I will never be hip. I never was. I never will be. Uh, to me, saying "thick lady" is insulting somebody's intelligence, which is uh, not something I want to do. All right. Now, at this point, I'm using wipe on guitar finishing uh, lacquer. At some point, it'll be called guitar finishing varnish because that's more technically correct. And uh, we're just going to uh, wipe it on, see what happens. Terry Love is wondering if the headstock needed some stain, or is the oil, Ooh. the varnish application going to make it? Got a little bit of sanding to do first. You distracted me. Uh, the varnish is going to accentuate the logos. Absolutely, and uh, it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, then uh, I will go after the fact with a with a fine liner pen, a fine liner pen with a yeah a uni ball or something like that, and add some pigment that way. Why are you still sanding there? There are fingerprints on the spoolie, aren't there? No, it's the stain just got underneath. Fingerprint. <laughs> um. Um. Matt Sharman says it's the fat lady spelled P H A T. Ah, I like that. Okay. Amy Court Kramer says... Can you write that down, Talitha? I really actually like that. Fine. And it's a bass and it sings. I want to see if it's something that somebody else has come up with in the past. But uh, if not... Nothing happened. Nothing happened. But it does remind me of... Nope. Well, yeah, all good. I'm having altogether too much fun today. Never would have guessed. <sighs> One, two, three, two, two, three, one. Okay. Um, well. Terry Love says, isn't the fat slash fat P-H-A-T lady usually a soprano? Uh, that's uh, actually makes the whole thing even funnier for me. <laughs> I like it. And here we are. So just rub on and be quick. So that is taking some of the stain up. Yeah, taking some of the stain up. We, we thought it would. There you go. Remember, we did the test. And I'm probably actually going to be adding some of the stain to the bottle by, uh, you know, during the process. But the end result is that 
if you're quick, once it starts sealing, you're good. So, so what I don't want is any finish to be to build up. You rub it on, flatten it down, and make sure there's no chunky bits, and you'll end up with a really cool finish, but it dries super quick. So that's not the finish that you used the foam brush last no. time? Well, yes, I was applying more. I ended up doing it a different way that time. Um, Do you need to concentrate or can you answer a question? Uh, you can ask questions. Slave to the Ink says, is it possible to make a series of remaking a guitar from lacquer to stain top, maybe adding a veneer if the top is horrible? I'm sorry, I was concentrating, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> um, remaking a guitar. Like taking a guitar from lacquer down and restaining it, and if the top is horrible, okay, adding yeah, it in the air it. and then refinishing it. Okay, uh, yeah, basically taking a, taking a cheap guitar, or like, like taking a cheap kit guitar and making it great. That was a pretty cool series, um, but taking a, something from uh, one of those really cheap Toman guitars, for example. Yeah. Didn't you get some guitars in an auction that you're going to do repair videos and yes. things like that? Shaman says all in catalogs. OMG, did I just potentially name one of Ben's builds on my first ever life chat? Uh, emphatically. Hold on, I'm going to send Tilly through a, uh, a WhatsApp in a second. I am like four feet away from you. Can't do it. Can't, hold on. No, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, it's not a technical difficulty. I'm just, uh, if you can read lips. No spaces or underscores or. No. Okay, well, essentially, this is one of those finishes that uh, will build up and is going to take some time. Separated by underscores? No, no, I, I like that, but also, yeah, also with an F, I think, actually. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to capital P it. Oh, capital P L B, really. Makes sense. Um, I think uh, everybody knows what you're doing anyway. Terry Love says, ooh, a series of skip diver guitars. Re, um, taking a guitar and re-doing it. Oh, skip diver. I thought there was yeah. a kind of bird or something for some reason. Oh, I'm sure it is. A 
YouTube lip reading captions read that perfectly, says Matt Lang. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if it is. If it is, that's really cool. Andre Silva says, Ben is actually doing what he said he was going to do in this episode. I'm disappointed. I also added a sort of a carved logo. For what it's worth. I wonder how much I can get away with, how fast I can do this. No, too fast. Too fast. Ah, fail, 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 Ben, you fool, what are you doing? Ha, 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 It's gone everywhere. I thought it would be funny. It's not like the oil, it doesn't spread. Yeah, ha, ha, shoo, man, stop talking to you. Yep. Not Ben is looking slightly tired. <laughs> Ben's a fool. Fool, I tell you. To be honest, that actually worked quite well. Yeah, the only thing is you don't want to have uh, drips going somewhere else, especially on the first coat. And now I've got uh, a damp section uh, on my substrate. Which is not ideal. Jamie caught Corona. Abort, mistakes were made. Wilson's <laughs> World 02 Flood. David King, I hear panic. There's a freaking mosquito that wants to die. Leave me alone. It's a, it's a one animal that I would happily just kill every single one of. Shane, All right. Shane Tockerty, this, this is what makes this live stream so awesome. What, my stupidity? Real life. Oh, real life absolutely happens, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that kind of actually worked out all right. <laughs> you should stop pointing the camera at the floor. They're, we're getting comments. I'm dropping a lot of today's detritus on the floor as we go. So, yeah. Now, I am not aiming for... I'm not aiming for a perfect finish here. This is a hand applied, essentially um, it's akin to the flash coat that we use at Crimson. It's going to be satinish. Uh, I could potentially end up with something shiny if I really worked hard at it, but with a stain underneath it that would require buffing and, and hand buffing and all that now could potentially just ruin the stain and have to go right back, which would not be fun. But at this stage, there's already enough finish on the bulk of the front of this base, at least, to be protective enough to, to carry on with. And we've already got a very satiny kind of an effect. There we is. that even focused? Not half bad, is it? Oh, I like this. So, uh, so yeah. Now the uh, we've sealed that. We're going to go over and do the back and then the neck. And in between now and the next stream, I am going to apply more of this in a slightly more controlled manner. I will, yeah, 
pour this into a bigger receptacle and I want to actually apply it in nice straight lines and end up with something that feels like it's got striations in the finish on on purpose um, which is uh, yeah it's gonna be fun but what say you we just pour some onto the back and uh, panic a little bit more together I say have it at it but only if I can film it okay it has actually if you look at the um, you look at that and the back feels a little bit lighter so it hasn't made it darker but it has brought out it has brought out the, uh, the stain the other issue is actually I am running the risk of having the, the finish go all the way through these holes as we have found out they they go everywhere In the interest of time, I'm just applying a lot of wipe on guitar finishing lacquer in an incredibly inadvisable fashion. We're good. It really well. Very <laughs> love. Damn it, even I'm tempted to buy a record ticket and hang that thing on my wall. <laughs> You'd have to learn how to play. And I have no doubt that you would. Jamie Crook Kramer. Do as I say, not as I do. Oh shit. <laughs> um, actually, funnily enough, How much came some did come through, which isn't an issue because uh, it's not an issue, but it came through in one of the cavit in one of the crevices that was inside a pickup cavity. So it, it dries fast enough that it doesn't want to get through the uh, uh, the whole, the whole body's worth of finish, uh, sorry, of, of wood, but uh, where the guitar was actually thinner, it uh, it really did. Would you add more finish into the holes to seal them? No, I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy as it is. Uh, essentially, this is going to act like a glue and it's going to hold um, some of the bits of of bark etc that are trying to come off but um, but no this is uh, this is it it's just cool in my opinion all righty so uh, yeah everybody we, I'm going to put a little bit more on the on the sides, and then we'll do the neck and see how that looks, and uh, and go from there. And 
Andy Gong says, wow, I stepped away for a bit to work after voting no on the amber because I thought it needed colour. I was very, very wrong. It's, uh, it's all good. We forgive you. And uh, it could easily have gone the other way. So, yeah, just apply, wipe on. No more blowing dust out of those holes. I'm wondering if any of it's going to actually come out after this, uh, after the fact. I don't think so. But this is a really good finish for a rapid uh, if fairly rough and ready uh, matte kind of a thing. Uh, it's certainly quicker than a guitar finishing oil. And will you be applying the same finish on the neck and headstock? Yep. Okay, so... With that in mind, we're about... About to get there. I just want to seal. Is that a bevel or has finish gone over the edge to onto the back? Somewhere. Bevel? Yeah, there's a darker strip of amber along that curve. Yeah, it's a bevel. Okay. Okay, so that should have now sealed uh, all of the amber. Terry Love For the most says, part. What does Terry Love say? Oh, the finishing towel, finishing oil towels are fire risk like linseed oil rags. Finishing oil, yes. Um, this wipe on finishing lacquer, no, it dries so fast that it's uh, not an issue. Although that being said, uh, just in the interests of never getting complacent, I always uh, responsibly rehome all finishing rags just in case. What about the spirit based stain rags? Again it, it's, it dries so fast that it's not a thing. The issue with um, oils is that it takes a long time for it to dry and there's an exothermic reaction while it dries. This stuff is already almost perfectly done. Are you putting that finish on the back plate? Yes. Now or not? Stop riding my ass. No. Uh, That's what you're painting to do. In a bit. In a bit. Okay, uh, uh, I do think I've got some on the top of the fretboard. So I'm going to leave the fretboard for now. The fretboard will be oiled at a later date. But... Uh, Is that from fingerprints? Uh, my finger went around the outside and got it. Yes, it was. You're a meanie. Meanie, uh, I tell you. Gitli wants to know where the link for the raffle is. The raffle is not live yet. I wanted to finish the base. Um, I wanted to finish the base and have the edited videos go live. So essentially what you guys are watching is an evolution of a person who perennially misplans uh, or, or mis misunderestimates uh, his, his, his times and times. You just snorted. You laugh snorted, Talibah. Um, so in this just case, I, know all this. I want to finish. I want to finish this and then launch the raffle when I've actually got a photograph of the finished base. And we'll start editing and putting out a proper series. Uh, this will be the first instrument finished before we actually start editing the main videos to go on the main channel pretty much ever, I think, Talitha, yeah? Sorry, there's bots in the chat and I'm trying to figure okay. out how to deal with it. Beat those bots.
okay i'm just setting up the camera so yeah we're gonna we're gonna do that we're gonna set the whole thing build the whole thing and then launch a raffle uh which lisa wants to win and then um uh, It'll be a thing, and uh, while that is going live, I'll be working on the next project, and the next project will then have time to be edited, and it's, it's all going to be great. Can't wait. King Bob's Guitar Works says, that would be funny if the first time you hit a low E, the dust vibrates out of all the holes. <laughs> I am going to hit it with a, uh, an air gun um, at some point. Anyhow, so two, camera two, let's do camera two, there. All right, so, let's apply some finish. And seal in the fingerprints. Mark Jennings, he put me up to it. Oh. Wow, he's delegating now. How very sneaky. I'm very, very concerned you're going to knock that bottle off. Yeah, me too. If it happens, it'll be on camera, it'll be funny. <laughs> Matt Charman, next video suggestion. Okay. The misunderestimification of the Fat Lady Bass Raffle. Uh, That's a great word. It really is. from Bradley McKinney. Bradley. There's an Australian company called Cole Clark Guitars okay. that has an acoustic guitar called The Fat Lady, spelled F-A-T. Um, that doesn't surprise me. That actually sounds, it's, it's a very Australian name. For... Yeah, he says it's a big Australian company that's been around for years. I guess this is a concern that Potentially, I think, um, I think a fat lady bass. Hmm. I mean, it wasn't an issue until you brought it up in public. <laughs> we could get away with ignorance until you spoke. Uh, no, I think, uh, I don't think it's too much of an issue, to be honest. Let's go to camera three. Especially since this is an acoustic and this is a bass. Yeah, it's, it's a bass. It's not a, I mean, actually, Fat Lady for a Dreadnought Acoustics, a really good name. Uh, Mark Jennings, regarding his prank, says, You can never underestimate my devious intelligence. Yes, I know what I said. So yeah, this doesn't colour the wood very much at all, which is something I don't particularly like about it actually, but it does work really fast. Could you add stain to it like you can the oils? Uh, that I've not tried, but what you could do is add, is before you apply this, you apply a single coat of shellac, which does give a lovely sheen to the wood and bring out the chatoyance and all that. Um, Should you do that on the front of the headstock if you want that carve to stand out? Too late. No, I want to see what the carve does. <laughs> Lisa's now trying bribery and corruption. 
Seriously? And uh, she knows exactly what I would fall for. Oh. Uh, Salifa, I will send you a Lego set of your choice to ah. get me that best. Death Star. Ten Death Stars. No. One will do. <laughs> So yeah, this is, it is picking out the um, the logo. You can see the, the variation in finish and the end grain and all of that. It is doing its job. Uh, but you might want to emphasize it just a bit. But it does need to be emphasized, yeah, I would suggest. Very Christian has taken your new word to the nth degree in a phrase. Okay. The misunderstandification of procrastination simplicated. See what I mean? Works out right, doesn't it? Damn it. Does this not work out rather well? I think with a, a delicate fine line pen, just to add a little bit more variation. And I think we're, we're good. I think the big unit is now offering me Lego as well. All right. A lot of people want this space. Well, I heartily uh, commend entrepreneurial spirits. lost my uh, I don't want to use the, uh, the nice marking knife to do this okay look everybody we're uh, we're running low on time and we have actually achieved pretty much what we set out to do today so uh, we're gonna start winding down I'm gonna hit that with a pen in a minute so don't don't go away too quick but if you have any questions that are burning away at you send through a super chat or two and uh, we will answer them but uh, essentially we're going to start calling it an evening um, jackson de cruz has a question jackson yep. jackson how are you can you use this finish on top of an oil Somebody hand me my rum. Uh, I don't know why I was I started. It was very Jack Sparrow. It was very Jack Sparrow. I was <laughs> just, just thinking. I'm not even a fan. I, it's, no, okay. Um, once it is cured, yes, probably. But, uh, but it's not something that I have tried yet to date. Now, if the, if the oil is dry and you want to apply this finish, then uh, uh, likely, um, likely hit it with... Run a test. You don't even need to necessarily sand it down, I don't think. Apply a coat of shellac first. And shellac will act as a barrier between the oil and this, and it will absolutely 100% then work. Um, but uh, yeah, run some tests. 
Bitly says, Ben, the logos are wonderful, but that truss rod access steals the show. Fantastic. Oh, phew, I thought you were going to say that you didn't like it. I really like that. <laughs> Plus it looks like an egg. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Easter bill, etc. Uh, Paul Needs says, the logo looks like there are a few bits in the lower rear of the body. Scalpel to clean. Uh, they're probably, yeah. Scalpel when a thumbnail is available. It's all good. All right, so various pens. Uh, this is a multi-mark permanent. Uh, the black pen. It's just very delicate. Whoops, that's absolutely not focused on anything. Oh, I see. You guys can see the floor, can't you? Yeah, that's why d there have been many comments about when the last time you cleaned. Uh, not this morning. I normally clean just before a live stream. Okay, uh, that's not actually working at this point because uh, the finish is still too new. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call that a. Uh, Glow in the dark. Jeez, it looks good, Gil. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm not doing that. Uh, I might have to go in with the V gouge and cut out that section of. Uh, of Thank ink, you. of ink, but uh, I don't know. No, I um, I think this is going to be quite good. I think it would look better with uh, with red, potentially, and uh, we shall see, or even gold. Gold, but you might need to do that with a very fine paintbrush instead of. That. No, the paintbrush wouldn't work. Um, I, um, so yeah, it needs to be one of these sort of stapler pigment liner, um, beautiful things like this, and you can get a really delicate, uh, and it's just super delicately accentuating it. And um, we'll get there. Um, okay, questions, comments, criticisms. Uh, the time, time. She's running low. I can bring you one of my fine calligraphy pens and the gold ink. I want it to be something that could be done in the factory by anybody. Oh. Um, so if, if we can't do it that way, this is as much prototyping as, as anything else. Cool. So, yeah. Mark Jennings says he's about to ship you some Lego. Please don't see it as a bribe. Shipping me some Lego to give to Talitha, I assume? No, it's just I'm shipping Ben down. I'm about to ship some Lego down to Ben. This isn't a bribe. But I'll take it off your hands if you want. I mean, I'll take it as a bribe if you want. <laughs> it's Lego. <laughs> I think seriously, when the world goes to shit, Lego is going to be one of the. It's going to be currency, man. I tell you. But it's plastic. It's part of the problem <laughs> of the world going to shit. Thank you, Mark. I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, yeah, you're insane. In a good way. Like us. And that was me gesturing to all 500. How many people are watching currently? 470. That's not bad for a Tuesday. For a mm. Tuesday, you guys are insane. Thank you. Beth McKellar's on my side and thinks glow in the dark would look nice. Glow in the dark on its own in a normal non-glowy dark environment just, in my opinion, looks a bit meh. Um, and that's the problem. 99% of the time it's going to be seen in the light and that's the thing so yeah we'll see i'll have a so paul needs just had an idea just had an idea paul needs i'm probably going to say this wrong as a bass player who has owned a 26 fret warwick buzzard that huge cool. gap between the end of the neck and the first jb pickup just looks so massive yeah it is. Not entirely sure how that happened, but uh, oh no, I know because it was supposed to be a, just a pickup in the in the middle with no uh, 
bass pickup, and then we added a bass pickup, which sort of has thrown the uh, uh, the look off a little bit, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, it's all good. Uh, now, gold leafing. I think you've all seen me at least do some copper leafing, where you take a a gold size and you paint that on, and it's uh, essentially an oil-based adhesive, and then you put your copper leaf or gold leaf or whatever it happens to be on that size, you tap it down, and then you end up with something that's relatively, well, it can be very delicate and really beautiful. In the past, uh, you also used to be able to get powdered gold, and you would do the exact same thing. You would paint down your uh, well, size, wait until it had partially cured, and then you drop your powder on that. And uh, that is what I did in here. And that That's copper powder. is copper powder. It's our copper inlay powder. And um, essentially, the top of the copper powder doesn't have any adhesive on it. So you've actually got a metallic metal powder that sort of buffs a little bit like actual metal would. Where the inlay powders, uh, traditionally, if you mix it with glue, it, it loses that metallic, it still looks metal-ish but it loses the metallic shine of it. Now, in these, I could do exactly that. I could flood it with, um, I could flood the logos with the size. gold size. You heard me forget the words. <sighs> Isn't it annoying when you're in the middle of a sentence and you forget the cabbage you wanted to say? Um, And then I can sprinkle on glow in the dark powder. So we're both Basically exercising my curiosity and. But you also just said you wanted to be an easy process for people to do in the production room. And that's really easy because all you need to do is paint it on, cover with the thing, and then sand. Okay. So it could actually work. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between, we have a base. Uh, the fat lady is almost about to sing. Uh, I'm really, really excited by this. The finish is well in, in, uh, well in progress. Uh, over the next week, I'm going to apply more. Uh, build it up a little bit and we'll end up with a um, sort of satiny, textured, uh, very protective finish over this amber stain. I'm incredibly happy with how this instrument is turning out and uh, I hope you are too. Now when the videos go live, when the final edits go live on the main channel, this will be available for raffle. Links will be in the description in those videos. Until then, it'll be up to you guys to dream and covet and lust, if that is something that gets you going. Oh, it smells just delicious. Is that a bit weird? It's time for my dinner, I, I don't know, we're done. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Single piece, um, pippy ash, you might call it, uh, figured and gorgeous, and I'm really happy with the shape. Uh, I'm really happy with the neck. Uh, the finish is coming together. She's fretless and cool, and uh, just like you. There we go. Talitha saved me. I am rambling. Help. Yeah, question. Thank you. Phew. Ready maker one. <laughs> Sorry to keep bombarding you with this, but I can't seem to get an answer. I want to build an electric acoustic for the kit build for GGBO. Is this okay? Yes, absolutely okay. Um, uh, so, 
if it is built in the style of a traditional acoustic guitar and it's just got an extra pickup, then you need to be in the freestyle category, which is the acoustic category. Whether it's got a pickup or not, it's an acoustic guitar first and foremost. If it is a 335 style guitar or a traditional electric guitar that's just got F holes and say a cavity, but um, it's mostly a solid body guitar, then you would be in the uh, um, in the scratch build category. Um, yeah. I hope that answered. I think so. Um, the reason for the backlog on emails is we've just had a four day weekend and uh, Dale is also experiencing some computer issues. So she's a bit behind on responding to emails. Okay, we'll talk about computer issues after the fact. Question from Patrick Nesbo. Patrick, how are you? Uh, I just tried to glue a veneer on a top. The glue has managed to bunch up into sausages under the veneer. Could I use a glothing iron, clothing iron, to heat up the glue and flatten it out? Yeah, I mean that's a really good idea. Uh, in in the far past that happened to me once to a certain extent and uh, I used a very delicate very sharp scalpel blade to poke a hole in the veneer and then I pressed it and it was like a, a, a an oozing pus filled wound I was just going to imply what I was trying to say but I just felt it just, it just, it just anyway. set it all out yeah and it just most of the glue went out. Uh, now, when you are applying a veneer, seriously, you need to use a clamping call. So clamp something down onto the top, and in between the clamping call and the veneer, you need to have a substrate like like a leather or um, that sort of puffy white plasticky stuff. Basically, something to cushion. It cushions it, but it also spreads the pressure. So, if if you've got just a hard thing and then the veneer and the glue, it, it doesn't necessarily spread it out evenly. If you've got something soft, it spreads the pressure out evenly and your veneer will have fewer bumps and lumps and, 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 and issues like that. Um, I would potentially use both options. I would uh, use a, uh, an iron to warm it up or even a hot air gun, to be honest. I think an iron you might end up burning the tops of the sausages of glue, um, which wouldn't be good. So yeah, warm the thing up with a, with a hot air gun, really, and then uh, get rid of the glue by cutting holes and spooging. But uh, yeah, veneer is one of those things, uh, people assume that it's easy and quick because it's traditionally a cheaper option. It's not easy, nor, nor is it quick. So, Mrs. Crow is uh, is coming down. We are just finishing. Oh, have a look. Just pushing up. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, gorgeous wood. Ta-da. Yeah. Very nice. So it's worked out. Can you see the capybara? Oh, well, I, they were talking about the rhino. Yes. Yeah, so uh, can I see a capybara? Capybara. There's the head. There's the eye. There. Oh, that's the eye. It's oh, got yeah. an eye, little nose, and mouth. Oh, now I see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're calling it the fat lady, PH fat, fat lady base. I like it. Uh, yeah, we, we're literally just calling it a day. I've managed to achieve pretty much everything I told them I would today, which is the first. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's all fun and games. How's your day been? Fine, yeah. We're good. Uh, okay, wrap it up then. Questions, we've got one minute and 45. Four seconds. Six super, seconds. Super chat from Terry to say, okay, I'm off to eat. Thanks for the stream. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you very much, Terry. You have left an over-abiding... Um, hole in our lives. Hole in my tummy. I'm, I'm, I've been craving tea and jammy dodgers all day, thanks to you. <laughs> right, one more question. If I can find it again. Stephen Clark, Stephen? following up on a previous question from this morning, 
to add color to an already oiled piece, mm -hmm. would it be better to add stain shots to the oil or just stain straight to the instrument and then oil on top? I think it would be stain to the oil. Um, yeah, add stain to the oil, basically. Uh, most of our stains, all of the stains that I've tried to add to guitar finishing oil have worked. So yeah, I would do that. All of these little things that issues happen and problems become problems and you need to find a fix. And yeah, that's that exact thing that hap is happening to you now happened to me once and, and that's how I fixed it. Cool. cool. All right. Well, look, everybody, I wanted to say thank you very, very much for your support. I sincerely appreciate it. I wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for you guys. Um, I'm happy with how the space is turning out and I'm excited to hear her sing next week. This is the end of the third day. It has been seven hours. We did six and a half hours one day. Seven and a half. Seven and a half another and seven today. Minus a half hour for... Uh, wrote it down somewhere. On your handling call or block. Yeah, it was on something, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. So it's roughly 20... Yeah, it was hours. Nine, seven hours plus six and a half hours, six, twelve, twelve and a half plus nine, twenty-one and a half hours. Yeah. Anyway, it's all right. Look, we're we're definitely fading. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic time. Click like, subscribe, mash those buttons. Please consider supporting us by joining as a member for extra stuff and content and bits and pieces. But most importantly, go and make some sawdust of your own. There are instruments just in potentia that need to be born right now. Talitha is looking so bored in the background behind this camera. It's really awful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the cows are in the car. Yeah, you can look in the cows. Okay, I get it. Uh, you guys are awesome. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. And thank you. Seven hours, one minute, 25, 26, 27. In straight.